All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are starting right now, it's about 5.35 p.m. We're starting our study session on food truck ordinance. Uh, and we're gonna have an initial presentation by our corporation counsel, Gary Miatki, and then from there, for all those that are present, and on Zoom, we're gonna go into questions, discussion, and then determine where we're gonna go as a body in terms of food trucks in the city. So at this particular point, uh, it's, it's, it's almost kind of sort of like brainstorming. So we come up with some ideas as far as which direction we're gonna take this thing, and then we'll go ahead and go from there. So Gary, if you could do us a favor, Give us a general intro, brief history of where we're at, because as you know and I know and the mayor and all of us know, this thing kind of sort of started way back when in 2017, 16. Right. So just a little bit of a briefing to the audience and then where you stand on this, and then we'll continue from there. Okay. All right. So uh, basically one of the things I want to uh, highlight is, again, the process at this point uh, for how we are supposed to move forward. Uh, this is the study session to consider the ordinance from a policy standpoint, and there are various issues and ways in which you may uh, react to this uh, that might cause significant changes to be made in the proposed ordinance. Uh, after the City Council has input, the proposed ordinance would go to the Planning Commission for a public hearing to consider it from a planning and zoning perspective, and then the Planning Commission make recommendations. And then it would come back to the council. The council could do a first reading, uh, direct any changes to be made by corporation council, and then after the revisions, the city council uh, could have a second reading and adopt the, uh, the ordinance. The ordinance itself is actually split into uh, two sections. One section has to do with essentially having mo mobile food vendors. So that's really more section one of the ordinance. And that kind of reads like a business licensing uh, ordinance. Um, the second portion of it has to do uh, with, um, and it's actually under sections two and three, have to do with changing zoning. Because the way the ordinance is written, it would essentially treat uh, this type of use is an accessory use to a main use uh, for property. So you'd have essentially two different approval processes uh, which would overlap. So um, looking at it from the standpoint of the first portion of it, you can see if you start at the first page, and I believe this is all numbered in terms of the ordinance, so or the proposed ordinance. So you can see we start section one, uh, section 16, uh, 201 purpose and the definitions. Um, under sex, and, and I'm just gonna try to highlight some um, of the important things as we go through. Um, you can see that under the definition, section 16, 202, uh, mobile food vending business includes not just a, uh, what would be traditionally considered to be a food truck, but also includes food tents or food carts as well. Um, then you can see that there's a requirement under section 16203 that this would be, you would end up having to get uh, special land use approval and this would be required prior to getting the license. Uh, um, Gary, if, if I can interrupt you for a sec, just before you continue, if you don't mind. Under section 202, under mobile food vending businesses, um, you said it would would include food tents? Oh, I'm sorry, it does it not. Would not, does it not. does not, right. I just want to make sure to clarify, okay. No, you're, you're correct, I'm sorry, Council Chair. That's fine, I, no, it's okay. I, 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 and sorry. just for your information and for those in the audience, I'm gonna allow for some questions for, from council members while you're going, <laughs> so we can have this thing a little bit more like a discussion, if you don't mind, would that, would that be okay with you, uh, Gary? Oh, absolutely. Okay, yeah. so during your conversations, they may raise their hands to ask you a question, go ahead. Right. So again, I'm, I'm sorry about that, but yes, the definition does not include right. uh, food tents and food, uh, food carts. Um, then we have, again, the prior necessity for special land use approval. Um, then we have uh, a requirement of having this type of license um, and the license having to be renewed on an annual basis. Then there is the application for the license under section 16205, uh, which contains the general requirements, including things, for example, having all necessary licenses or permits, 
uh, by the Wayne County Health Department and or the state of Michigan under D, uh, proof of insurance under uh, G, and um, the fact that it's not a transferable vendor-to-vendor -vendor license under uh, little i as well as a uh, license issued is valid for one uh, such vehicle and its employees. Uh, Section 16.206 uh, requires an application fee and uh, to end up being paid in an amount to be set by the city council. And then um, here's, I think, something that's really important, Section 16.207, locations permitted. Um, I'm actually going to read this. It says, vendors licensed under this chapter shall be permitted to operate only in parking lots of privately owned or publicly owned property in accordance with the terms of their license within the city of Dearborn Heights. All special event permitting ordinances and requirements in the city continue to apply and to be in full force and effect in addition to this chapter. The provisions of this chapter shall not apply to vending in connection with special events as provided for in this code, in which case the special events provision of this code in any resolution adopted in connection with the special event uh, shall apply. Um, and then it says all vendors wishing to locate in a public park shall comply with city Department of Parks and Recreation requirements and fees. So Gary, can I, can I ask you a question on that? that sure. That's one of my notes here was to ask you on this one. So in a, in a public spot, so i.e. that would be, um, I don't know, one of the parking lots that we, we as a city own or maybe a park in itself or possibly a school, I presume they would still have to get permission from us to be able to be there and offer food. In other words, let's, let's use um, uh, Parkland Park on Ann Arbor Trail. Um, someone couldn't just get a food truck, pull in there, and just start serving food because it is something, you know, it is property that, well, in that particular case, it's not owned by us, but we're running it. Uh, we're operating it, we're running it, you call it whatever you want to call it. And I know we have a lease through the county, but they couldn't just pull in there and just open up and, and, and just start serving food. They would still need to get permission from us whenever it's a public venue. Is that correct? Uh, yes. And, uh, and, if not, sure. and if not, I, I, at least I personally think we should have that in there. We can't have just uh, the wild, wild west where they could just pop up wherever they want to. Right. And, and, and I'm trying to, because I read over this, and essentially... Um, because it's an, it, it says right under, on page 11, written permission from property owner. The property owner shall provide written permission allowing the mobile food vendor to utilize the property. And, and, and in part, uh, it, it, it kind of is implied that that would indeed be the case, but it's also stated because it's an accessory use. So in essence, this is a use for a property owner, say so you have a... Um, a business that wants to end up having a food truck. They have to have a site plan already in place and then this would be an accessory use that would be consistent with what they are otherwise doing, you know, the type of business that they're engaged in. So, so again, I, yeah, I read that and, and I right. totally get it on private lots such as Target, Kroger, you know, et cetera, et cetera, or someplace on Van Bourne. I, I totally get that. I'm, I'm just saying on our lots that we own, they would still, okay, let me put it this way, at the very minimal, because this was a little vague, personally I'd want it clarified, my personal preference would be with permission from the city if it's on public lots. I, assume, I agree. Public property. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, most of the council members, you guys all agree. Yeah. Mayor, you agree with that? Yeah. yeah. So, yes, and, and the, uh, so yeah, it is covered with the written permission from property owner, and that would obviously include the city. I mean, we could we could make the language um, stronger, if that was what was sought. Um, yes, go ahead. And uh, like, if they use the public, if they use the public parking, I mean, are they able to move from one to another every single day, or they're supposed to be in one place, one parking lot, or do we, do they need extra permits for that? No, they, well, they they would need that, but it, it would also be something where there would end up having to be a need for that, and the approvals would end up having to provide for that. In other words. It's an accessory use to a particular location mm -hmm. that you have. You could potentially have multiple locations conceivably, but again, that would end up having to be approved by all of those property owners 
and also by the city as, as, as well. So, Council Chair. Uh, so Gary, when I was reading through this, and I know some council members as well, and I think I had this conversation with you, um, it, it, it's, it's a lot of information, and I think it's a lot of jumps for to understand that, hey, if a vendor wants to come in, I just want you guys to just reflect on this a little bit. Uh, something like the Ramadan Sur Festival, which started at uh, the Dearborn Meat Market in Dearborn Heights. I know you played a vital role there, uh, Councilman, uh, the council chair did, and I believe then we moved over to Canfield, and I believe Councilman Musket, uh, the mayor, um, and some of the former council played a huge role, which became headline national news. So this, you know, where it grew so much because Dearborn Heights envisioned it, allowed it to happen, and it really grew. Today, it's expected to generate about 30,000 people this, uh, this, this April, come this April, and is being at a, a lot larger of a venue. But what it was so accessible for, for the gentleman that put this together was it was, there wasn't a bunch of hoops to jump through. You know, we had, he had the conversation with this council, the council approved of it. Uh, I believe he called the mayor because I was with him when he called the mayor. He called Councilman Dave Abdullah. Councilman Muscat actually went to his business. He sat down with them. We took notes. They tested. They saw what was happening. The fire marshal came in. They did their study. He literally brought in the health department to check every single food vendor. Um, Hype, it, Hype did one too, if you remember. Yeah, and, and Hype did one as well. Hype had a large one. <laughs> and what well, was that? Hype. Yeah. Uh, for the for the Roman Sun for us. But this year it's going to be at Canfield, uh, not at Canfield, it's going to be at Fairland uh, Mall. Fairland. And I believe Canfield is doing one as well. So what I'm what my thing is similar to, you know, I, I, I don't want to say I, I, I did a lot of thinking. I was just in Aruba, just got back, seen a bunch of uh, food trucks there. Nothing against food trucks, but I kind of saw a different vision. Um, and I, I would love to see a temporary f uh, a, a food truck license, but I wouldn't want to see a full-time food truck license station somewhere, especially in the cold. Um, I, I would like to see transitions, and I would hope that these food license, you know, food trucks that open up uh, can get a temporary food license from the city of Dearborn Heights, and that's something that's stationed forever, and I don't want it to be more of, you know, a million other you know hoops that you have to come through. I think we can simply set something up where you have to set up a bond of two, three hundred dollars. I know the city does a minimum of five. You put this bond in to making sure that the you know after you use the Parkland Park, it's cleaned up. There was no damages done. You get your five hundred dollars back. You pay a certain X amount of fee of that five hundred. It can be one hundred twenty dollars, and you know the city you know you know generates this one hundred twenty dollars. And I'm just throwing out. X numbers. I'm, I'm not saying it has to be 100. They, they have a bond right on place at 500 dollars. Yes, and so I, I, I saw that, and so I, I just read this and, like for example, I know Mike Mackey at uh, Elite Sports is going to do a second mm -hmm. annual mm -hmm. some type of Ramadan festival in at Canfield, and I don't want these vendors to have to come to this private place and have to jump through X amount of hoops, and then get turned down or something goes wrong because the city set all these type of guidelines because right now there is no ordinance so right now what happens is when somebody opens up this tent or food truck which i'm a witness of the the they get a uh they have a scheduled appointment with the health department the health department comes to the location speaks to the business owner they check and make sure that everything's up to code they give them a 14-day temporary license and then 14 days later they come back and they you know charge them for another 14-day temporary license unless something is uh you know submitted in, indefinitely does that make any sense? Yeah, I, uh, here, here's the thing, and I, as we discussed, I, I did not draft this ordinance. Originally, Mark Roberts ended up drafting. Okay, closer to the microphone. Oh, okay. Uh, originally, Mark Roberts drafted uh, this proposed ordinance, and then Jennifer Hill ended up making some uh, changes to it. The complications in ordinances and the complexities are usually driven by how many different situations you envision having to be considered when it comes to an ordinance. So whenever you see an ordinance drafted by me or by another lawyer that seems to have so many different permutations and a lot of differences and so on and so forth, that's usually based on the fact that something has to take into account a lot of different situations. So you might end up having someone who wants to go to, for example, a private gas station and have a, uh, a food truck license. That could be very problematic, so you have to end up making sure that there's 
more required in terms of approvals. The situation you're talking about almost is where you could end up regulating it far better. The council could look at this and take an approach of, we are only going to have certain areas or zones where we are going to allow these to take place. That would allow for a more expedited approval process and would not require quite the complexity that's envisioned in this ordinance. This ordinance is like, let's say, um, you know, uh, council well, chairs a, a place of business or your place of business says, hey, I want to do something like this. And then they, you know, the, the, the person comes in and someone says, well, you don't have enough parking to do something like this. You don't have enough facilities. Oh, by the way, there's a bunch of other businesses that will end up being affected by this if it's done at, on, you know, on a Ford Road location or something along those lines. So one thing that I've thought about in terms of this is maybe just sitting here and saying, hey, look, we, will, we, we should identify areas that we already feel comfortable with these types of things taking place, have a certain number of vendor licenses without having to do some sort of special land use um, approval, which is envisioned by this ordinance, which strikes me as like you're going to do a special land use approval, then you're going to have a vendor license. You know, the need might already have passed by the time you go through that whole process. But then you're also going to give someone something permanently, like you were talking about, Councilman Beydoun, where you might look at that as being not the way you end up approaching this. Or you may only want to approach it and say, look, people can end up being at one location, say Canfield, between certain hours. And then the rest of the time, we're not going to end up handling food trucks um, at different locations. Like I was saying, I know that a number of years ago, there was an issue about a food truck on Van Born at a, at a gas station. And then you would have a bunch of people coming in and then a bunch of people going out and you could have a great deal of congestion. And so part of the reason why this ordinance was drafted the way it was, was to deal with those, those types of complexities. You could make it a lot more simple and then the ordinance could be so, so far simpler too. I, I will tell you, I was just in the Dearborn meeting uh, regarding food trucks and the newly elected mayor uh, Hamoud came in and made a very simple checklist. You have to have X, Y, Z, submit your $85. You're getting a temporary food license. We're not giving anything indefinitely. This is just what we're using because we know that come the spring and summer, uh, everybody's going to go out and be doing it. They know that the Ramadan Sword Festival is happening in Dearborn. We know that Mike is going to be opening a festival there. <laughs> And all it was was pay an X amount of fee, tell me where your location is going to be. The business owner said it's fine. Uh, that's between you and the business owner. Now, now the business owner, ultimately, from what I know from past experiences, A, you have to have a commentary, uh, or you have to get a, you know, when, whenever Heights Hot, Do Heights Hot Dogs was set up at the Lava Lounge, we used the Lava Lounge as a commentary for Heights Hot Dogs. But in the situation <laughs> where a festival happens at, let's just say, Canfield, the health department comes in and will inspect every single vendor. And if you don't pass the inspection, they're going to tell you, hey, this person's not allowed to be in here. And if they do, the ticket goes to the business owner or whatnot. And I'm just giving you an example of how things worked in the past. But I still would want that business owner to be charged some type of fee so that it can revenue money back to the city. Well, and, and that's one of the problems. One of the problems with having food trucks like this is as they say in economics, externalities. And you are now going to potentially end up having problems with traffic. You're going to now end up having problems with, you know, police having to be called. You're going to have now a whole bunch of things that are going to end up having to take place and the food truck vendors are not paying anything for that. Well, well I also want you to keep in mind that I've had business owners recently reach out to me. Uh, the Halal guys happens to be one of them right on Ford Road and they said, can you find a way to get me a couple of vendors here uh, during, the months of Ra during the month of Ramadan so that uh, they can sit outside my building to generate traffic into my business because we know what's going to happen. People are going to pop go all these pop-up tents. And so he said, if I have a couple here, at least it'll help bring in generate business to me. Um, and so like I I've had the mobile on Ford Road and Beach Daily said, I need to find a vendor. I want a vendor to stand here in the month of Ramadan because I want to generate traffic into my business. So some business owners are kind of like wishing for it. They say, please put somebody out here temporary. So my thought mind kind of goes, 
and I understand that this is just a discussion that we're having, why don't we put something together that's very simple, that's temporary, that's not indefinitely, uh, maybe you could draft something up so we don't have to go through that land use and you know, go through all the hoops and then simply uh, allow the city to come in, go to the building department, issue it, go to the court, give it to them, well, and you got your temporary license for so one month. So on that, Rick Watland, yeah. Watland uh, from the building uh, department has already put something together and I know the clerk's office has already put something together. They've already started. Like I said, this thing has been discussed since 2017. The game plan here, at least from my perspective, is to have this thing as kind of like a soft opening. You know, kind of when you open up a business, you just do a soft opening. You start taking in uh, customers, but you're not going to do a grand opening. With that, we'll be able to work out all the kinks, all the issues, all the challenges that we've got. And then when, we, when Gary and his team put together the final ordinance, we'll have worked out most of the kinks. We'll know the, we'll know the best practices to use in the mm -hmm. formal one. And yes, I agree with you. And I spoke with Rick today, and, and he's on board to have something, you know, somewhat simplified for right now, so we can do the soft opening and see how it works out. Yeah. You know, because sometimes there's unforeseen things that come up that we didn't think about. Absolutely. So we'll start this slow, but what we don't want is, whether it's during the month of Ramadan or after Ramadan, for people to start just opening up, and, I, and you've seen it and I've yeah. seen it. Oh, yeah. We don't want people opening up without health department approval. We don't, pe we don't want people opening up without any type of parking situation. We don't want people, or at least I say I don't want people personally, so I'm speaking on my behalf, not on behalf of the council. Well, uh, I think all whole, of us agree. Yeah, parking, you know, we want to make sure people are not running, and I've seen it, people running across Ford Road in the middle of the night. We don't want that. No. You don't want nobody to get hurt. Nobody. So if we as a government regulate it, soft regulated for right now so we could get this process started and then figure out all the kinks and then eventually put together a much more specific ordinance. I also re spoke with, and I'm so sorry, Council Chair, I've also spoken with the health department through Wayne County uh, with, her name was Phyllis, and she said, I'm going to be majority in Dearborn and Dearborn Heights all, all Ramadan. Rather, the, the city of Dearborn Heights has an ordinance or not, if they're not approved through, through the county, we are gonna shut that place down and then, you know, they'll be shut down through the health department. They'll be issued a ticket to the health department. Uh, being asked to shut down if they don't have a license. If somebody passes a license, we will issue them a 14-day temporary license unless it is a committed food truck that's already went to everything and has a uh, vendor's license through the county. Um, well, and, and, and like I said, I think one of the issues to simplify things, because I recall there being real issues, and I wasn't involved in the enforcement of it as much. I know Mr. Roberts was. But there is a real problem with things just springing up and then people parking on people's front lawns along Ford Road because there was just no parking and it was just pretty chaotic. And I remember receiving complaints from the police department with respect to this. And so, you know, again, if you're going to allow for an easy process, you're going to potentially have a proliferation of these things with inadequate regulation and a real mess, both in terms of you know, safety and congestion and litter was a big issue when that ended up happening, and noise. And uh, you know, so the easiest way to have an easy process mm -hmm. is to have limited places where these things can end up popping up that can be easily regulated. For example, the Canfield you know, center, for lack of a better way to put it, but, you know, the, the new facility where the uh, Canfield Arena was would seem to be away from population centers to a certain degree. It would seem to be a reasonable place to end up having these pop up. Having them pop up at, for example, a gas station that has, you know, just enough parking for the expected uh, customers who would be there, strikes me as being something that would be very problematic with, with or respect, potentially problematic. With respect, I also don't think us as the government can tell somebody if they can park on a public street or not. So if somebody wants to park their car on the side street and walk over to the gas station, we shouldn't, we, we wouldn't be, I, I don't think that's legally okay. I mean, would we be able to do that? Tell somebody you're not allowed to park on this public <coughs> road? No, but we can, we can require certain parking. Oh. No, I... Okay, so I've been trying to get somebody's attention here for a few minutes. So that we, we have few concerns with, uh, uh, with street vendors. So I, I know uh, Canfield did an amazing job last year, obviously. You know, they kept it uh, 
kind of uh, in, in the same area, and I know Mike did a great job cleaning up the area. I mean, I was watching him take out trash, clean up trash, you know, even the next day. Hype also did the same did thing. So I do agree, we do have to put them in certain areas. I do not agree uh, to put them just everywhere because uh, you guys are not the, I mean, you do get complaints from residents, but for the last year, I've gotten dozens of residents come in to my, uh, myself and also the police station. We had several meetings at the police station. Residents that can't sleep uh, at night, you know, when you, uh, there's, there's, I don't want to name them, but there's a few vendors that actually open up just, uh, there's a wall between their house and where they set up shop. And that's not acceptable. Because a lot of residents, you know, they, they have to sleep. Some of them work during the day. Obviously, they're not, they, they don't practice, you know. So, I mean, you know, they're, they have to wake up in the morning, 5 o'clock, and they're up like 1, 2 o'clock in the morning, you know, listening to the noise. And you, you can't even imagine how much anger that I've seen in the last year, people complaining about, you know, uh, past hours. And also, we've gotten complaints from... Uh, uh, local restaurants that, I mean, you might have one or two that they like the idea to increase traffic. However, a lot of restaurants, they reached out and they said, hey, we're paying taxes, we're paying for business licenses, we're paying for this, and you allow these people to come in and they set up shop down the street from me or across the street from me. So that's, that's something we have to be considerate of. So we do have to be mindful. We have a lot of, obviously, businesses in Dearborn Heights. You know, we, we have to make sure that they're also, we cater to them, you know, because they are, you know, they, they are paying taxes. They are doing what they have to do as business uh, owners. Uh, with that, uh, we do have, we, uh, obviously, we have to have law and order for, for this thing here uh, to pass. We do have to go through our police department and also the fire department just to make sure uh, if you set up something, I mean, like say, I mean, you know, I, again, I don't want to name businesses, but you have something that is, a, is in a fire lane, you set up something, God forbid something happens, now the fire truck can't get to that location, or, you know, uh, or even like say the police department, you have an issue, they can't get to the scene, you know, there's, there's so, so much congestion. I, I, I agree so, with you. So we, we, have to, we have to really do our due diligence for, for all of that. So with that, uh, I've actually gotten a call it's strange enough, a few days ago, from Garden City City Manager, Doc uh, Doherty, and he mentioned, he says, I've seen, you know, there's chatter that you guys are doing uh, some type of vendor uh, uh, food, uh, food truck license. Wait, uh, he says, wait, wait, hold off, hold off. Okay, um, I noticed a couple, I'm sorry, Mayor, a couple people are going, they can't hear you guys, can you hear us? No? Okay. Let's check the internet, just one second. She's directly, I think the internet's directly. Kathy, can you hear us? I guess not. Can you hear us? No. Nope. Uh, Kathy, no, Kathy can, Bell can now. You guys, can you hear us now? Okay, we're good. So Mary, so, you may want to go back maybe one or two sentences because I don't okay, think let they, me, I think they stopped rewind, hearing. Rewind the tape. So I, <laughs> okay, so, so I got a call from uh, Garden City City Manager, Doc, uh, Doc, uh, Doc Doherty. And uh, so they, they heard there was chatter about uh, uh, food truck licenses. So they told me that they had actually they had this uh, ordinance that they just incorporated and they passed it last uh, few months ago. And uh, so I asked if he could send it to me. I went through it. It looks pretty, pretty good. So maybe this is something that we can just do as a, as a starter. We can look at it and look at the, the one that Mr. Miyake is mentioning and we can maybe try to do the best of two worlds. I, obviously, we, we have to uh, take into account, you know, a lot of the residents, you know, we, uh, I mean, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm for having food trucks, obviously, you know, it's, it brings the people together, people come out, but at the same time, we have to make sure the residents, uh, they're at peace, you know, people that, you know, have to wake up early in the morning. Uh, so we do have to set, set, you know, guidelines. You have to be in certain areas. It has to be away from residential, and also that uh, the current uh, businesses around the area don't have issues. I mean, if you set up, uh, again, I don't want to mention names, but you, you, a certain restaurant and somebody sets up a food truck next door that has the same food, that person is going to have issues with that. So we're going to catch it. You know, we're going to get complaints from, uh, from those businesses at the city. 
So this is something that we have to really also, I mean, that's something in addition. Again, I looked at the coordinates that they had in Guard City that they just incorporated. I mean, I, I suggest that we look at it. There was a few tweaks that I would like to make to it um, based on some of the discussions that I'm having with residents, business owners. So I think we should look at that. You know, I can forward it to the council Yeah, tomorrow. if you don't mind. And, and, and I, I want you but to I do, I do want to clarify. I'm sorry, uh, Councilman. I just, I just want to clarify something. This is not going to be for Ramadan only. This is, yeah. Ramadan is probably just a soft, like I said, soft opening so we could work out some of the kinks. Absolutely, we want to be conscious of residents. And that's, that's exactly why we're regulating it, so that it is controlled by yes. us as a city instead of just, uh, like I said, the wild, wild west. That's, mm -hmm. that's not going to happen here. And I'm sure, I know, Mayor, you're on board to make sure that it's regulated. It's not just anybody can open up whenever they want to open up. But this is just, a, and, and I also want to make it clear that the, the purpose and the vision of this ordinance is long term. It's not just for the one month. It's year round food trucks. Now, in terms of a restaurant being impacted, I, I absolutely, I do see that point. I don't see, especially with the type of, type of weather we've got, that this is going to be, you know, they're going to have 40 food trucks in the city. I doubt it, personally. Yeah. And we do have to keep in mind that anybody that opens up in a particular parking lot has already gotten okay from that particular, um, you know, let's say if it's Target, let's use, use that as an example. So if, if I open up, well, not me, this is, so this is not about me, whoever opens up a food truck, Okay, Joe's food truck, and they open it up in the Target parking lot, they're going to get permission from the Target parking lot, and I'd like to hope and think that the owner of that particular um, venue, the Target, like let's say, for example, would take into account if there's any potential effect on one of their tenants. Yeah, but in addition to just the businesses, we, have, we also have to go so many feet, you know, like say 200, 500, 200, 500 feet from residential areas. So if you, if you have somebody that's setting up something, like say within you know, 40 feet, 50 feet from a house, and now you have people coming into these food trucks and they're, let's say, past midnight. So that, those residents, I mean, I've, I've seen them when they come into the city hall, uh, they're, you know, they're, they're exhausted. They're just like, they're ready to sell their house. And, and, you know, we can't have that, obviously. So we have to make sure that we, we cater to the residents as well. I, I know exactly yes. which one you're talking about, where yeah. the backyard, was the light was hitting it, the, yeah. the thing was running. I, I remember that conversation, and I can tell you um, that the vendor that was open there will not be opening up back there. I believe the business owner that owned the building right there had a conversation with the next-door neighbor. It's actually not happening anymore because the person called me and said, hey, they're telling me I can't do it here anymore. And I said, to be honest with you, if that was my house, I wouldn't want you there either. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I, I agree. I, I want us to be very uh, you know, alert on that. But I also want you to keep in mind that if a small business owner, or for example, let's just say Dave owned a whole plaza. Say he owned Target, which he doesn't for the record, but just say he owned it. Uh, half. You know, ha half. And he put... You know, there's a bunch of different uh, shopping spots in there, and one of them sells ice cream, and, you know, the, the, the business owner let the ice cream guy come in. I believe that would be in violation of a contract if the contract said, hey, if I open up ice cream in your parking lot paying rent, I don't want any other person. Now that ice cream shop is open to being, it's you know. Yep. Yeah, but, that, but that's exactly why we're doing, like I said, this type of a, just a soft opening to, to work out the kinks. And look. I agree with you, Mr. Mayor. I mean, uh, I, I'm sure I'm speaking on behalf of most of the, uh, all the council members. Absolutely want to make sure that the residents near these particular menus have to have, no, not have to have, they have a right to live in peace. Absolutely. And I'm sure I don't see anybody objecting to this. So we're, we're all, that's exactly why we're doing it like this, so that we can regulate it. And I think at this particular point, if you don't mind, Gary, um, I'm going to let on uh, Rick Watland if you don't mind, just to give us a general idea as far as what he's got in place already. And then, Madam Clerk, I'm going to allow you to tell us on your end what you have in place. So at least residents slash people that want to apply for these licenses have an idea of what we have in place <coughs> right now. And some of the council members will also be able to have an idea what we have right now. Because we do have something, if you, rec if you guys recall, the mayor instructed uh, his department heads to put some something together, and between them and the clerk, they put something together. So if you don't mind, Rick, if you could give us a general synopsis of what the process is right now as it stands, and I want to make it clear, this is not the final process. This is not the end all. This is not it. This is just a starting point that us as an administration or the city as an administration have put together to start with, and then we'll start tweaking it as we go. Go ahead, Rick. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. 
Well, like we talked about before is we, we put it into place to do, you know, a site plan, uh, a $500 bond, they have to have insurance, a $100 permit, and then we would send them down to the clerks to do the business license. But as we kind of looking at them, the business license is pretty expensive. So I don't know if we would change it to cut it down. Yeah, we had to discuss that in a little bit, yes. Yeah. So, you know, I know there's a lot of stuff to jump through, but so if so question for you, Rick. If if I walked in today and I want to open up Dave's hot dog food truck, provided I have the food truck in place and everything is good, starting with you, how long is the whole process beginning to end? How, is it days or is it hours or is it the same day? Or how does that exactly work with you guys? It would probably be a day. Okay, that's nope. reasonable. That's reasonable. In, that's unless fun. you're in a spot where you're real close to the residence or something like that. You know, if you're going to the Canfield Center or something like that, that's a little different because we we're wide open there. But but within within a day, the, you could get your permits and everything all up and running. Okay. Can I? Can right. I so we 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 had a real big one today that was the food truck on Van Born and uh, Pelham. You know, they they rigged up the electricity and all that stuff and caught fire and all that today. So did they get mom? Well, well, let's not put them on the spot. Here. <laughs> and they never got no approvals or nothing. So okay. Well, then, you know what, Rick? Then that's exactly why. It's exactly the type of example that we are talking about. We got to regulate it. I, right. I wouldn't want my mother right. to walk up to, I'm not using the Van Born place, any place, you know, without right. somebody from the city having checked the electrical, plumbing, et cetera, et cetera, make sure that nobody's going to get hurt. Okay. But, but exactly. my question to you, Rick, is, and you're saying it would take about a day and you have like a checklist that you would follow through the $500 bond, the $100 fee, the, you know, whatever, whatever. Does that mean that, the, that food truck is also walking in uh, prepared with being already approved with the, with the county as well? Uh, yes. You're talking about the health department. Well, the, co the county would be up to them to get approved for it. What is it? We, the they would have to bring out something from the county saying that they're approved. Okay, and so if they're not approved through the county and there's a delay with the county, that means there's going to be a delay with the city. Yes, sir. And so just for the record, so that we're all on the same page, the county is three months behind right now. Right. So unless the yeah. county is walking to a place like mm. similar to Canfield, walking and checking everything at one time where all vendors are there like they're going to do in Dearborn, and I'm assuming they're going to do with the Canfield Center or the Elite Sports Center, uh, it's going to be very, right. very difficult for somebody to go ahead to walk into the city because everybody's just so behind. Right. But, you know, like food, food trucks, you know, like all the Cinnabons and all that stuff, I already have, it automatically gets mailed to me monthly that they're all approved. So any food truck should already have that. But I think you're talking about somebody starting from scratch. Really, I'm, I'm saying somebody to start from scratch. So like, I, you yeah. know, Dave's gonna go tomorrow and he wants to open up his hot dog stand to compete with Heights hot dogs. I'm not sure why, he was probably not gonna sell much, but he's gonna try to compete with it, but now he's gonna be struggling because he doesn't have anything approved with the county. He can't walk into the city and get anything approved. Um, right. And then, you know, here goes the spring and summer just finished. Come the winter, Dave just invested all his time, effort, and resources and couldn't sell one hot dog. But on, the, but on the other hand, though, Councilman, do you really want anybody to open up without any type of health department? No, approval? absolutely not. So absolutely. I'm not saying you. I'm just saying, do we want? We don't. No. So I don't know what the solution is, but, you know, because well, we, we, we can with, do it. With, with the food trucks... They, they would already have a certification for all of Wayne County. They would? Okay. So, yeah. You know, the, the problem we're going to have is tents. Yeah. You did? Okay. Yeah. Councilman Constant, go ahead. Just to Councilman Baydoun's point, this is a basic, hopefully pretty quick, one day process. Any food truck, like there's those taco food trucks, they get their inspected, they get their license, and they have it, or the Cinnabon trucks or any trucks. So your example with Councilman Abdullah, start, the first step he would do after he had his truck all set up is have inspected, okay, by the health department. But we, we, we don't wanna make it easier for a food truck to come in and compete with a brick and mortar business that's paying property taxes and not have to comply with anything. Fourth of July or Ramadan or, or anything. Right. 
Right. And we want to make sure people can go to their, you know, if it's a special football game. Every year at the Spirit Festival, the community service groups used to be able to have a food booth. So Kiwanis had one, Redskins, North Durban Heights Football League, uh, Rotary, on and on. We had requirements to keep out somebody from just coming in and like setting up a, a grill or something in the parking lot because the community service clubs uh, uh, got certification in advance, paid some money, and then they raised money for the community. Okay. Thank you. But if either way, I presume, Gary, I mean, it's, it's, it's a presumption, but you can't open up any type of food venue without the health department approval, no matter what. So it doesn't matter what we think. Isn't that, that correct? That's correct. Yeah. But part of it is, is how does that work vis-a-vis -vis the city's requirements? I mean, just a suggestion, from what I'm hearing, it seems to me that it would make sense to identify specific zones or districts, areas where this could end up being done based on, you know, traffic, uh, away from residents, uh, sufficient parking. Um, I, you know, again, the complexity of an ordinance in this situation or any sort of regulation is going to be driven by how unique the situation is. If you have certain areas where you just say, okay, this is going to be good for food trucks, you can have a more simplified process. But once you start getting into, I'm going to have a food truck on Van Born in a service station parking lot, you know, you're just asking for there to be a problem. Like, uh, you know, Rick was just talking about a fire taking place and things presumably not being approved uh, through the city in terms of any connections or anything, even the temporary process. That's just asking for a very serious problem to take place. My sense would be also you'd have to take into account hours and overlapping hours. Say, for example, uh, you have a location that has a lot of parking, but they use a lot of parking during certain hours. Well, maybe you would say, okay, you can end up having something between 6 and 11 and uh, take that into account in terms of a, of a location or something <coughs> along those lines. So. Um, I think that that's a, you know, that would be the approach that I would recommend. I agree that this ordinance is very complicated, but I understand it was drafted because it was trying to deal with, you know, if someone comes in from, say, some business that has limited parking and they say, well, we want to be considered for this, the easier thing would be to just say, no, you're prohibited from doing it because you are using all of your allotted parking space in the first place. You don't have any excess spaces. And I know Councilman Baydoun was saying, well, I don't think we should tell people where they have to park. Well, some places, you know, good example, you know, there's a, a, a restaurant that I've frequented uh, that's on the uh, northeast corner of Ford Road and Inkster. If you believe that anyone can end up having, you know, off-premises parking over there except in another business lot, namely they can go down the street, that's just not going to happen. It's impossible. <clears throat> so you have to take into account the parking that's available if you're going to do it in a private lot. And you may actually sit there and say, look, some of these public spaces are the better places to go. Again, Canfield, perhaps Hype, some of these other places might be just a more sensible way to end up having these are locations that we can deal with we just need to make sure that they don't have their music on too loud for example sure and um uh, I agree with that. then I we like could have idea. an expedited we could have a, a quick process you get your uh, health department uh, license you end up paying a certain fee for the city to process things through the clerk's office and through the building department mm -hmm. And, uh, and you're good to go, as long as you okay. operate within the appropriate hours as, as shown in an ordinance. Thank you, Gary. Thank yeah. you. So I'm going to have uh, Madam Clerk, but when you start, Madam Clerk, if you take into account just two concerns of mine, and I spoke with Rick about this. Rick, I'm sorry, Rick, was there anything else that you want to add? Or? All, all set. You're good? Okay. So the, the, the business license, one of the things that uh, Rick and I spoke about, and he had a very good idea, is 
Right now, it's two hundred and fifty dollars. So for a temporary business license, for you know, business license, let's say for one month, that's a lot. In addition to all the other fees that you, so he suggested maybe a temporary business license for like two weeks, or maybe a month, whatever, of fifty bucks or maybe a hundred dollars. Uh, so that's something if you don't mind addressing, maybe Madam Clerk. And then the five hundred dollar bond, he explained it to me, and and I got a clarification because my head was more in terms of like like jail time. Yeah. Bonds, you know how much money they put up and how much, what percentage and all that. But he went on and explained to me that no, if it's a $500 bond and I'm opening up a food truck, I'm putting up $500. The city hangs on to it. They make sure that I've cleaned up mm -hmm. when I close shop, and then I get the 500 bucks back. If I don't, then the city, through Rick, has to bring somebody in to clean up the place, and then we keep the 500 bucks. Madam Clerk, please. Okay. Um. We've been talking to the building department, and what we would, we've been talking to the building department, and what we would like to do is um, include the business license application with the information that they're giving to the business owner, so that they have it all ready and they know what they're, what's going to be required of them. That, of course, would be up to some of it would be up to you whether or not I, I've looked at like the, our solicitor license, our street vendor license, just to see what's required and. What was not on the building department was um, we required two passport photos of applicant clearly showing head and shoulders. Would that still be required on this? Two uh, driver's passport license, of photos, you said? Two passport size photos. Okay. Just the not passport, but oh, just the size passport. photos. Yep. Me off. Okay. <laughs> um, insurance and registration for each vehicle being used. I think they have the liability insurance on, on the building part. And do you want them to have a computerized criminal history? We require that for uh, the street vendor license. So let me ask you, well just on criminal history, I'm just thinking out loud here. So do you require it if I'm opening up a regular restaurant? Not a regular restaurant, but we do for an ice cream truck and street vendor. We do. If, if I may, Council Chair. Um, that that was, that's been incorporated for years with the idea that um, you know, you could have predators going out there and uh, so being out on the street, you'd have, you know, really no way to be able to track them. Um, they could very easily have access to children. Uh, so that's part of the reason why street vendors have ended up having okay. the additional requirement. And it's not been irrelevant in, the ent in, in its entirety. We've ended up actually having some people who've had some issues that we think people would not want that person to end up having a, uh, a license. And of course the fee, we could present it to you, but it's up to you to approve the amount. So right now it's at $250, correct? Roughly, that, that, at least that's what Roughly Rick for told a carnival me. it is. I know that, and I did check Livonia. I tried to check Livonia. I just went on the internet and looked. I think one of them charged 250 as well, and the other one charged like 500. Okay. What, what do we do for veterans if they, if a veteran wanted to open up one? A veteran? Yeah. I know the city of Detroit gives them zero. Yeah, I think, because they're a nonprofit. Well, it's I beyond, would believe. It's, it's beyond that. There's actually a state statute that okay. has to do with vendors there you go. and, um, uh, people being veterans if they end up having it. <coughs> so, so something I, I, I think that was passed back around World War I, if I recall correctly. I, how many, if you don't mind, uh, how many people, Rick, I don't know if it's you or the clerk that can answer that, how many people have, I know it's, it's been early on, but how many people have applied so far? And I'm just trying to get a okay. gauge as far as how many people are trying to get this. That'd be Rick. Do you know it, uh, Madam Clerk? I do I not. That so. Okay, Rick, roughly how many people have applied for this type of a permit recently, in the last two weeks, let's say, roughly? He looked like he just uh, we've probably had about six or ten asking about it, so not not that many. How many have actually applied for the license? Uh, none, because none. we were waiting for this. Because if the sure. other way, they'd have to go to the planning commission and stuff like that to get approved. Uh, and I'm just saying this because we got to keep this in perspective. <coughs> I, I, I think sometimes we get that impression that we're going to have like 5,000 people applying, and just in my mind, I think it'll probably be 10 to 15 max, but it's just in my mind. Go ahead. Um, and, and I know we're just, you know, we're, we're following precedent, we're, right, we're you know, following the guidelines. Um, I also f still feel like that's, it, it's just, it's a huge process if somebody wants to open up a temporary, you know, license. I, I just personally believe that. You know, having two photo IDs, um, 
you know, two hundred and fifty dollars. And I know that's something that the council is going to have to approve on, um, but it, 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 that's pretty expensive. You know, how many hot dogs are you going to sell? What is the price? You know what I'm saying? All I'm thinking is, I want the city uh, to have the vision of being open-minded and saying, hey, you know what? If somebody, uh, let me give you an example. This is the, this is my mindset. Maybe we're not seeing it this way. The councilman over here opens up his new real estate office. He becomes his new broker in this new real estate office and he invites all of us. The mayor's bringing the ribbon cutting and you know what? Here comes Dave's hot dogs and driving in his, uh, you know, he's got this little tent set up outside of the councilman's uh, new broker shop. And here you got the councilman flipping his hot dogs. This is something that's very temporary. This guy's going to have to send two photo licenses. He's going to have to go do a background check. He's going to have to pay $250. He might have to come see the planning commission. By the time he does all that, the mayor have, has probably cut 20 different uh, 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 ribbons at that point. I just want us to be understanding a little bit. All the man wanted to do was bring Dave's hot, you know, hot dogs to flip over there. All I'm asking, make sure the health department approved this. Yep. Let the city have gotten some type of money through this. Let him get his one day of fame outside of the ribbon cutting where the mayor and the council is going to be at and let it make it very easy. I'm not saying somebody needs to be there in the middle of the night at you know, four o'clock jamming music in somebody's backyard. And I don't think, any, I don't think anybody here agrees to that. No. Um, I think it's, we, just, we have to simplify things a little bit. The city of Dearborn just adopted one where you walk in, you pay your fee, you got it for one month, mm. and in one month we come back, we give you either your $500 bond or we're keeping it and we're saying, hey, you didn't do a good job. And then I believe they are limiting in space. Uh, Council Chair, just uh, two things. One on the fee. Uh, mm -hmm. The fee, our fees should always be structured not based on just an amount that we pick out of the air. They should be based on a, a rough estimate of how much time it would end up taking for uh, employees to end up doing the work and how much would, would be required to oversee the whole process and potentially be involved in enforcement activities. So I think the $250 might be something that needs to be revisited just from the standpoint of do we really have $250, including wages and benefits uh, in that process of having to do this type of a review and setting up the process in general, including potentially my fees that are associated with it. Um, so that's one thing that's easier, but I think there still is the problem uh, Councilman Beydoun, of if you're going to make it really easy, then you better end up having parameters that already exist with regard to the properties that exist where this is going to take place. Otherwise, you really are going to potentially have a Wild West situation, and all it takes is one, you know, one fire at a, at a food truck that didn't have its electrical connections appropriately set up uh, in a crowded area, and then you're going to end up having a, having a problem. But, but that, that ultimately plays a role with and with respect, Council Chair, that's okay. That plays a role with the health department. The health department's gonna determine, right now, if there's a, if there's a live wire, the health department's not gonna say that's okay. There's a live, you know, you, you can't just plug in something and, you know, let it be next to a bunch of uh, fryers. It's, it's just, it's, 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 not, it's not code. It's not gonna be allowed. It's not okay. And so, if somebody's temporary opening, you have to temporarily get a temporary license. If you're indefinitely open, then you're gonna have a Wayne County or Oakland County uh, uh, vendor's license. And I'm only speaking this because I know somebody recently went to Oakland County, got a vendor's license, and it's indefinitely to be able to go anywhere in Oakland County. Um, so if he's going to drive to the councilman's new broker shop in Oakland County, it's already been approved. This, but the city should still revenue some type of money where now the, you know, Dave's uh, hot dogs is going to come to the city. Hey, I'm going to be at this broker's office where you guys are doing the ribbon cut. Here's my fee. I've already been approved through the county. Here's my insurance. Here's my license. I want to prove it. Can I pay some type of fee? do my event, and then leave, where I'm not going to be at his event anymore. Right. My point in saying part of it is, is that it can't be a fee-generating sort of, um, uh, you can't set a fee to generate. No, 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 that's revenue. fine. If 250 is the fee, 250 is the fee, think, you're absolutely I think correct. Two, I think 250 is too high, and I know we're not a profit organization, you know, for all intents and purposes, we're not running a business here. So we just want to make sure, like uh, our corporation counselor said, that it's enough to cover the expenses, but not... We're not right. My intent with all this is not to create profit, just to create just good vibes for residents in the area that want to enjoy this type of stuff. And I totally agree with you, Councilman, that yes, it should, you should not have 80 hoops to jump from. And then that's where maybe between the Madam Clerk and Rick Watt, Watlin, who's got his hand up, so I'll, ha I'll, I'll have you go right after I'm I finished. Think he froze on the maybe they could put something together. 
it's simplified. Yeah. Maybe, you know, email it to all of us to look yeah. at and then and comment on it. But again, this is going to be just temporary for right now. Rick, go ahead. With, with you guys talking about that $250 fee, that, that was just for the business license. Yeah. When you come to the building department, we're, we're having them pull a permit under Carnival Festival, and I think it's $100. Yeah, I think it's too many fees then. My well, that's what I'm saying for the business license. Not, that's what we're talking about. The business, business license about. was high. But if you've got so, the $100 fee, and then you got another 250 it's 350 to begin with. Bond. Right. And then but, you know, with, bond. That, with, with that $100 fee, you're getting two inspections. We're going to inspect it when it opens, and then we're going back to inspect it. To so that one sure I can see, but I'm up. saying an additional 250 So maybe, yeah, can, right. can, can maybe I, we yeah. could have through the city one fee that pays for everything. Right. And I'm just throwing it out there hypothetically, 250 for everything, A to Z. Can, can, right. And I don't want to jump through all this. I personally, and I said this to a corporation council, and I think uh, Councilman Muscat agreed. This, this one's a little different, but I know you said you got the one from Garden City. Can you send it over to us? And yeah, maybe, we can, maybe we can revisit and just not force. I just don't want to f push something just to do it. I'll I want us to all be on the same page. I know the mayor said he read something. It was nice. It was yeah. good. I want to see it. That's all. And then you could tweak I'll, it. I'll send it tomorrow. I th their fees, actually, they charge. I mean, obviously, the licensing and everything, but they also have uh, uh, the regular fee is $25 a day, and the actual permit, it's uh, dictated by the council. So uh, I think... Uh, see, that sounds the, so clean. Yeah. I, I love it already. Yeah. Yeah, so Director Watland, I mean, he, he has a good, uh, I mean, he said that you have the, the fee to get the license, and the clerk will have the license and also $25 a day. So if they open 10 days or if they open 30 days, there you go. it's, it's yeah. more for the city. Council, yeah, I like Council. that. I really do, because some, some, some people might only open up Friday, Saturday nights. Mm -hmm. That's no. 50 bucks. If you, I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, there needs to be something back to the city. And I know we're not operating like a business, but at the end of the day, we want to make sure that the tax, you know, well, Council Taxpayers Chair. Taxpayers are receiving their uh, Council Chair, yeah, two points. Uh, one, Mayor, are, are they allowing people to end up going to private businesses, or are they having designated areas for these in Garden City as they've... Uh, I haven't gotten to the details, Mr. Miyake. I'll, I'll send it to you as well tomorrow. Okay. I, I, I just kind of glanced through it uh, yesterday, and it was a busy day today, so I didn't really get a chance. I wanted to go back through it again to kind of highlight more things. But in general, I, I like you know uh, the concept where they were going with it. Uh, it's actually f uh, it's uh, friendly for the residents and businesses, and whoever wants to operate, obviously you know they have to I go through to. their due dil do, do their due diligence to get the permit. But it's also it's taking account uh, the welfare of the residents and also other businesses. So it does talk about uh, the distance from residential areas, and also it talks about. Um, how far it has to be from a current business if it's not approved by the business. Okay. So I'll, I'll send that first thing tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I can't Chair. connect for some reason, Would otherwise I would send it now. Yeah. Council Chair? Go ahead, yeah, Council. we, we want to move forward. We want to get this in place or, you know, build on the work that's been done and get something enacted so that it's, it's so hopefully So right around. now for a temporary license, for a temporary permit, Rick, Watland has already had already has something in place. The clerk's office already has something in place. Is this something that we need to tweak, adjust, um, create? Is, is it something we could see? And then the other thing is, we as a body we have to decide. And I know we're not voting today, but is a hundred bucks plus a hundred dollars plus two hundred and fifty too much? In my opinion, it's a lot. But that's yeah. me. Yes, Mayor. No, I think uh, you know one, one of the things. I mean, obviously we have to. Uh, I, I haven't really looked at the, the final product yet. But uh, we do have to have the fire marshal, you know, also bless it. Good point. And the also the, the police department has to also make sure that uh, it's not a safety hazard. You know, somebody's not going to cross the street or, I mean, you're going to have a lot of kids around. So I just want to make sure that w we, we have to take that in account, that you have to get buy off from both uh, the police and fire department. So but, but the only thing that we have to also take into account, Mr. Mayor, is Yes, all the protocols have to be followed. Yes, we have to cross T's, dot the I's. But at the same time, we do have to take into account, and I think this is where Councilman Bedouin is coming from, is that this is a popular thing amongst a lot of people. I mean, I went to uh, Traverse City, and, and they had it a little different there. They had a, like a big section in Traverse City. If you've been there recently, uh, pretty decent sized parking lot, 
uh, probably the size of this auditorium, maybe bigger, actually bigger, double this. And they had about 20 food trucks in the same spot mm -hmm. with tables, with little patio areas. And you walk in, you know, you and whoever you're coming with. So in my case, it was like me, three, four friends. And we just walked through it from one food truck to another, tried different, different things. Yeah, different it's it yeah. it pretty cool. I loved it. Yeah. It's just a nice vibe, nice. Downtown so, does it so there is, yeah, downtown, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Woodward. Yeah. So yeah. there is a demand yeah, for something like this from a lot of residents. But I also agree the opposite point, which is yours, to make sure, of course, the residents that are not involved in this don't want to go to these venues, which is within their right. They also have a right to live in peace, too. Yeah. So I, I Count, agree. Council, Council Chair, I just want to remind you that on the 22nd at your regular meeting, you ended up approving the process that you're talking about that uh, Rick Temporary. has worked with and that uh, Lynn has done is based on your authorization that Correct. you ended up giving. Correct. And so the real issue becomes yeah. whether or not you need to end up doing any other votes. The real question with respect to that is whether or not the fee schedule that are at <clears throat> issue were previously approved by the council. If they were, then that has to come back to the council to end up being tweaked. Okay. And I would think that the uh, clerk's fee schedule probably was, but I'm not certain. I'll double check. Happened. Yeah, it, it, I, I would think you, You're saying basically it had to be on next Tuesday's agenda, right? Yeah. Oh, it should be to basically end yes. up modifying any fee schedule. And that, and, and frankly, the council in general has the authority to set fee schedules, and that's what the council should end up doing at the next um, meeting. I'm, and I'm just saying it out loud here. I'm thinking a, a reasonable number would be $100 for the permits through the building department and $150 application fee for temporary licenses I'm talking about. Uh, That's what I, think is I, I also like the mayor's thing, uh, 25 bucks a day. I know it may seem expensive, but some of these vendors, believe it or not, are, are bringing in a revenue, a lot of money. Um, so, I, I, you know, and then at the end of the day, they're not paying their taxes to the city. So I think 25 bucks. Right. But it, it, again, is it being driven by the need for continuing oversight? In which case, then one could say it can be justified because the city is potentially going to end up incurring that expense. And maybe that's the way they justified it. But if it's just being done as a revenue generator, mm -hmm. I have to caution you, that's not how you can set fees. Fees are not taxes. Fees are based on proportional costs that are incurred. There is a Bolt uh, decision from the Michigan Supreme Court yeah, a number of years that. ago. You may remember it. Right. Fees have to be basically proportional to the costs that are borne by the governmental entity. So what he's referencing fees. there is we couldn't, as a body or as a city, say, you know what, we're going to make uh, permits for, I don't know, uh, canopies, you know, uh, $1,500 per resident. That's unjust, and, and, and there's not that much cost for us. So we couldn't charge people 1500 even if we were able to get away with it. So I, I, I see where the well, But there, may, there comes may be a justification to do a per, uh, a per day uh, amount if you're going to say, yeah, we're going to check on these places on a daily basis. And then if you but do I think that, they then you can justify accounting, They may create a uh, accounting complexity to keep track of all the days. To me, I, I would love, personally, my preference would be like 150 through the clerk's office, $100 through the building department, and call it a day I, and I, for I, temporary 30-day license. Okay. Council, Council I, Chair, I like that. What I don't. Chair. Again, it, it just has to be roughly proportional. It doesn't have to be precisely right, right. calculated. I, I also ask that, um, I know you said, uh, Mr. Miyaki, you told us that we've already made a vote for them to go ahead and adopt, uh, follow the adoption of what the building department director, the mayor, and the clerk to move forward with <clears throat> anything we do currently now, is what you're saying? I'm saying that there's a temporary process that's in place that you approved uh, at the meeting on the 22nd. Did we go? Yeah, yes. we did. We did. Okay. It was just temporary with a motion. We did. Right, but it's, it's temporary, and if you're going to end up having an ordinance, and you should have an ordinance, then, uh, you know, really right now, it doesn't sound like there's a consensus uh, on, on your body, at least one that's been stated in terms of how com this sounds like it's too complex, mm -hmm. and I think it's too complex, but again, if you're going to want to end up making it less complex, you should end up having more clearly defined areas where you're going to allow these things, because otherwise, without the complexity, you're going to have a mess. Okay. I, I, are you guys, as far as the fees is concerned, through the clerk's office, are you guys okay with 150? Do you want to keep well, it at 250? We, you we want can't to keep... vote that uh, council. No, no, no. We're not going to vote. No, 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 no. no. The, reason I'm, no the reason I'm having this, this discussion, because if we are in agreement 
then I'm going to have Gary prepare something for us to approve it during the council meeting Tuesday. If we're in agreement that it should be changed. If we're comfortable with the 250, then there's nothing to change. Do you guys want to keep it 250 for this year? I, or I, know, I, I would, I'm, I'm with you to make it uh, 150 to the clerk, 100 for the, city, for the building department. Uh, does that, so we still have to do the 500 bond, correct? Yes. Can we have like a whole, like 500 and the 250 would be deducted from the $500 bond or does? I think they're just separate fees, I believe. Yeah, separate. and it's not a fee. Uh, a bond is a, no, a, bond is not a performance fund. There. So the they get it yeah. completely back if they, if they clean up everything. So can we, can we make the bond 250 or that's too early, you think? That's no, I, 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 per, my personal keep preference, I'd like to keep it at 500. Yeah. I, I, I want somebody to pay the price if they don't clean up. And Council Chair, before we move on, I know we're going to, like Ramadan is going to come every year, different events is going to come every year. So working on this, can we do like for good ordinance that's going to be short term and long term? and Oh, so that's the direction. Really yeah, absolutely. No, no. Visit this this, every, like, this is just it. So, so again, we, because we've talked about this for like, I mean, my recollection, Gary, you can recall maybe better than me. Years. I'm thinking five, six years we've been talking about mm -hmm. this. And, and I think it, and because of all the complexities, we're never going to fit. It'll just keep going. So that's why I thought, yep. my personal opinion is, that, hey, let's start with just a soft, you know, just a temporary thing for right now, I mean, I and then mean, continue to add uh, different visions, different options, different whatever, until we get a good one. Can I mean, we also? I like, I like whatever core council mentioned that having it in one place, but I think it's going to be hard, even like for a short term, because like he mentioned a gas station, the guy, the owner of the gas station, he wants to have a food truck for like maybe a couple of weeks. So I think he has a right to have it, but at the same time, maybe we should uh, set rules and regulation. Like if you don't have enough parking, or, or you're like too close to somebody else, or stuff like that, then you cannot have it. But maybe the, the gas station down the street, he can have something like that. Council Chair? Yeah, yeah I, I think we're all in agreement. We have to specify where you can have it, where you can't, modify the fees. I, th I think we're all in agreement. As far as gas stations, if the, the gas station on the side is going to sell pop, coffee, hot dogs, he doesn't want some food truck. Yeah, but if somebody wants to do like a customer appreciation day, if, I just if, I just opened if up. The, well, I'll give you an example. So O'Reilly Auto Parts, every year they have hot rod day or whatever, and they have a food truck come in, but he doesn't sell anything. He gives out food. But, I, you know, I, I think we, we want to move forward with what we have. If we have to change it, we have to change it. But prevent, prevent this situation. A food truck goes, pulls in, there's a big 4th of July celebration, there's fireworks, pulls in, parks on, on uh, private property, just, it's a good location, pulls in, sets up shop, charges, you know, everybody 10 bucks for hot dogs or serves liquor or something even worse, and then leaves. We want to be able to prevent that. Well, that's not allowed per the ordinance. Yeah, right? that wouldn't break the law. Uh, but, but I do want to ask Rick this question, a question that came to mind. So, Rick... If somebody applies right now, who's the ultimate, dis of course the county on the health part, we got that part, but who's the ultimate, at this point as we speak, the ultimate decision maker is whether somebody's going to be approved or denied. Is that you and the clerks or just you or who? It'll, it'll be in the building department, it'll be the site plan to make sure that they do have enough parking and in and out and they're not running across the street. Mm -hmm. So it would be me and then she would issue the, the business license. The, the motion, actually, I'm sorry, the motion actually says further, Doesn't it come uh, to the, the, council? the council actually temper, does the approvals. Right, but this, this is only for the temporary that's, one that we're talking about yeah. for the month of April. Yeah, but that's, what's, that's what the council voted on on the 22nd. It ultimately ends up still coming, having to come back to the council for yeah. approval. Okay, yeah. so if we want to do this for this coming Ramadan, and again, we want to be able to regulate it, then it would not be able to go through the council because there would not be enough council meetings mm -hmm. before Ramadan to be, for us to be able to approve it as a body. So question to you guys, not voting, but just question. Are we okay with Rick, Rick and his department and the clerk and, and her uh, team making a decision for right now on the temporary licenses until we have a full-blown ordinance up and running until in place? Until we can call it May 5th. Yeah, you know, just until we have a full one in place. I, I thought we said that we would we would approve them in the building department, yeah. and then we would send them to you. And you guys said that you would have a special, special meeting, meeting one right meeting. at the end of the month, That's and option. whatever's left was left. That's and I would option. send you stacks of them. So right, and then in the and the. The ordinance doesn't provide for uh, the building official to end up doing a temporary approval in this particular situation. The council could 
the Zoning Board of Appeals could, um, but uh, the building official doesn't have it for this particular type of use. Okay. Councilman Muscat? Well, the only thing I'm... Microphone. The only thing I was going to say, I was going to ask Corporation Council Miyake, um, what we said, we, we can't really even agree on fees here without, you know, e because you can't agree. What I was going to say is if they just bring forward whatever you're going to bring forward with the fee in it, and then, then when we meet Tuesday, discuss. we can discuss it there and vote on it instead of saying, mm -hmm. you know, everybody pretty much knows what we want have it in there. If there's something that, that we want to tweak it that night, we'll tweak it that night. That That's way we, we'll stay clean with good our idea. open meetings good idea. and everything. Yeah, and my recommendation would be that you have an item on the next council agenda yes. with respect to the fee. Uh, the clerk's office and uh, the building department come up with a recommended combined fee based on what they think would be the time that would be required in order for, to do this. And then you vote on that in terms of the temporary, uh, the fee for the temporary right. type of use. And then also probably should end up scheduling a special meeting where you could end up uh, taking care of, you know, all of these that might end up coming up. Okay. Um, Go ahead. So you, you, are we going to be able to add on this week's agenda? As I'm okay it, with as it. As long as you okay it. Yeah, I'm okay <laughs> with it. I'm okay with it. Is that okay with you? Yeah, okay. Okay. Is that okay? In, uh, so do it, maybe Gary, if you don't mind talking to the clerk, she's putting something together as far as legalese so that we could vote on it this coming Tuesday. Okay. All right. That's yes. Right. Yeah. Uh, Council Chair, uh, you know, we submitted the agenda, so it would have to be, um, the agenda has to be amended. Right. Okay. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. And I also want to say something. I got his chair. I got his chair. Okay. Oh, yeah. There's, there's currently make sure right that. now a small business owner that has a food truck at his gas station. It's strictly corn. Um, if we adopt this and we say that, hey, you know what, corn on the corner can't be there no more because of parking or whatnot, which is, you know, ultimately been there for. That's Deerwood, though. No, no it's, it's, it's still, still, still at Deerwood Heights as well. There's How do, one on Dearborn side, one on the Dearborn oh, yeah. Heights side. Which is approved through Dearborn. Dearborn Heights doesn't really have, have something anything. already. How do we go and tell him? No, you can't do it. But you know what? Across the street just told him you can do it. Well, right now it sounds like he's in violation right. of the city's ordinances right. and should be issued a ticket. That's what it sounds like to me. Right, like, well, right now you're saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you know, it's not an authorized use. He doesn't have either a temporary approval as the council has uh, ended up approving the process for, and we don't otherwise have a process for a more permanent approval. So he's... He's, uh, Prior to the council approving the, what we approved last week, would he still have been in violation? Yes. He's probably been continuously in violation ever since he's ended up doing that. So one year ago, when we didn't have any talks regarding anything on the table, the general was in violation? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And what violation is that? That there is no ordinance? There's so that no because ordinance. there is no ordinance, we're in violation? But he's no, because it's not even uh, permitted in terms of the site plan. All right. See, and that's, that's the way, whenever we have these uses where someone ends up doing something that's temporary on a piece of property, it's not consistent with their site plan because it's not an approved use. So this is the reason why this ordinance was done in the way it was. It becomes an accessory use to end up having a food truck that ends up being approved and therefore is now allowed because it's effectively it's considered to be part of your site plan that you can use for this purpose. Right now, no one has that uh, ability with respect to a food truck to end up operating, and they would be in violation of the city's ordinance by virtue of doing so. Moreover, he probably doesn't have a business license uh, to deal do this as well. Right. So he could probably be cited for uh, violating uh, some section within uh, Chapter 36, which would be a $200 fine, and he probably would end up being able to be cited for failing to have a business license and or registration, which would probably be, I believe, a $100 fine. So See, with calling with, the fee schedule, with, with it might be $150. So with respect, I, I don't want it to be that complicated to where we're telling somebody, you know, this, this, this small business owner of the gas station says, hey, across the street does it, he's my competition, I'm going to do it, but the city is now saying I'm not allowed to do it, so here I am now losing. Well, actually, then it would be both of the business owners that are engaged in the unlawful activity would both be told that they can't do it. And well, one across totally the street is Dearborn. It's not Dearborn Heights. Well, Dearborn is Dearborn. 
I mean, you can do a number of things in Dearborn that you can't do here. You can also be charged with a misdemeanor for, you know, not bringing in your trash cans in the appropriate amount of time. I, I, I understand um, that. So, but what I'm, so what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is I don't want us to go through that. How do we make it more accessible for somebody? Right. Well, I mean, I've, I've stated, I think, probably about three times that my recommendation would be maybe what would be best would be to identify the building department. Maybe the planning consultant could say, these are five different areas within the city that would make sense for these types of, of, of businesses to take, take place. There would be sufficient parking. There would not be too much congestion. And then designate those as areas and then use them as a places that can end up having an easy approval. Maybe even have a two-step process. One, if you're going to be at these specific locations, you can end up having an expedited approval as long as you have the health department uh, license or permit and as long as you go through the city's process. If you are not at these particular types of locations, then we're going to require you to go through a more extensive process because your situation is much more complicated. It's more likely to involve problems with the surrounding neighborhood. That could be a, a, a kind of a hybrid approach that might end up working. I mean, when we were talking about an easy approach, it would an easy approach would be like we've got, you know, eight different places within the city where you can end up like like Councilman Abdullah was talking about, having an area that's just set aside for food trucks, uh, have it as a like you know city property. Say, look, you're going to end up paying this amount. We'll do all the cleanup and everything else. We'll expect you to clean up, but we'll take care of all of this stuff. You pay a fee to us, all of you food truck people, and then you come here and you can show up as long as you've gone through the licensing mm -hmm. process. That would cut down on congestion and all the other problems. But if you're going to do something that's more difficult than that, then we're going to have a more complex process because, to be frank, it's more likely to present a problem to the city and, uh, you know, property owners that are close to the event. That, could be, a, that, yeah. could, be a, that could be an approach. Mr. Mayor, go ahead. Okay, so uh, this ordinance actually has uh, the zones, you know, so it talks about what zones that okay. you can have these food trucks or they call them mobile trucks. Um, you know, it talks about, you know, O1, C1, C2, C3, and so on. But also, Mr. Miyaki mentioned about the um, location, says, this one section says mobile food, uh, mobile food vendors shall not operate on city-owned property or on uh, public streets or right away unless approval is obtained for street closure and except at such times and in such locations permitted by the city council. When mobile uh, food vendors are permitted to operate on public streets, Obviously, it talks about you can't have food outside, you know, the actual food trucks. It, this is like pretty in detail, it's very in-depth. It talks about, you know, with some of the complaints that I've heard is lighting on the food trucks, you know, uh, they project on residential areas or, you know, they t even talks about the bulbs, you know, they can't be more than 60 watts. So then they talk about every truck, you can't have a food truck or any, any vendor without having uh, uh, trash trash bin, recycling receptacles, or any of that sort, you know, and, you know, don't, obviously no dumping of their water. And I remember uh, last, last year, you know, somebody actually dumped grease down a drain, you know, last, last year, and, you know, we addressed that issue. But this is something that we also, you know, it talks about it in here as well. All right, so. and, and, and that's exactly where we're going with this, Mr. Mayor, is again, we want to regulate it, but we don't, we don't want to be prohibitive. Yeah. And in a perfect world, again, uh, I'm just referencing what I've seen in Traverse City personally. Like I said, I, 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 I could definitely see that being like, if we, if we had something like that here, being a destination for a lot of people that, you know, show up, eat burgers, dogs, hot dogs, whatever they want to eat. And it could be like a fun place to hang out. But again, initially it's probably not going to happen. Yes. Right now we're going to start with just a soft opening, start this thing out, minimize the regulations, but yet keep uh, residents' safety, of course, as, uh, as a top priority. Keep the residents' peace mm -hmm. that live near these places a top priority, you know, making sure that they are able to live in peace. If they don't want to, you know, if I live two doors down, I don't want to show up to whatever particular menu, I don't have to, and I don't have to hear it, or see the lights or what have you. But at the same time, some of the residents too have to also understand that, you know, let's be a little easy too. Let's not, you know, let's not go too harsh on some of these businesses that are just trying to make a living. 
Was there anybody else on the, go ahead, Councilman. Council Chair, so I know this ordinance does not include, you said, the tents and the food carts. So does that mean that a gas station, for example, he can have a tent outside and sell whatever? No, they're not supposed to. They're not no. supposed to. So right. that's, what if he wants to have a tent that says different license, different permit? Uh, I think that you would have to end up finding a different section in, in order to Council, well, keep, Council keep in mind, Chair. this ordinance that we are looking at here is just an example ordinance that was put together by uh, Councilor, the attorney, the city attorney, one of the city attorneys, Mark Roberts, um, in 2017, I believe it was. So this is not the official one we're voting on soon. Well, no, right I now understand. Just temporary. to have an idea, because a lot of the, people, they ask, well, can I put a tent, for example? Well, well it's a good question. So, that, so that's got to be um, It has to be addressed. addressed. It uh, has to go in front of planning zoning, because somebody already checked into that, Councilman. Mm -hmm. So it's still, if you put any kind of structure outside a business like that, like a tent, or a structure, you would actually not mobile, then you have to go in front of the planning and zoning. Then because based on that, the only thing you'd be able to have is the actual food mobile. driving truck? Yeah, because you can't, mm -hmm. you can't alter the structure of the business with, ha without having to go in front of the planning and zoning. But if you're having a tent, then you're not altering the structure. You're just having well, you, you still, I mean, you're taking away parking spaces from, the, site from the business site plan. You're, you're exactly. altering the site. So all these people, when they have tents and they sell fireworks for the 4th of July, do they go in front of planning and have You're those? Right, they're, they're supposed to. Ricky's, well, they also. Eric St. Brink, okay. shaking his head yes. <laughs> they have to? Yeah. yeah, yeah we just went through that recently. Well, the mayor, the mayor hit it on the head. They're supposed to. Yeah. We want to discourage those. And, and Council Chair? Go ahead, Council. This is the big reason why we need more ordinance officers. And, and, and uh, uh, <laughs> that didn't come just strictly out of my mouth. It was Tom, uh, Councilman Tom Wenzel, uh, who couldn't make it here today. Um, you can't possibly patrol all of these places. Uh, with two or three people, I mean, it's it's, well, it's next to impossible. Well, the thing is, at night also you're not you know you're not paying. I mean, that, yeah. then, so then you have you, to have. A, then you have to turn it yeah. over to the police department. Yeah, exactly. Council Chair, but I have a question that hasn't really been addressed. I, I read on page nine and ten, uh, item C, that the outdoor cooking, outdoor food preparation and cooking is prohibited. Is everything pre-cooked before they come to? No, they just can't no. like grill stuff on the outside of the it's food cooked truck. Cooked in the but truck. They have to cook can't inside, do it inside the food truck. The truck. Right. All right. Just wanted to. But make again, sure. you know, I'm glad you brought that up, Councilman. I, I just want to make it clear, and this is a reference to Councilman uh, Ahmad's point. This is based on what we're putting together here on a temporary basis. You cannot open a food tent. Right. You'd have to have a food truck, actual food truck. So I'm just clarifying it. Uh, uh, I have no problem with food tents if it can be done in a way that's safe for everybody, but I just want to clarify that. What we have as a temporary license is under food truck. Anybody else have any comments on this? Council All right, Chair, uh, um, go ahead. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just uh, at, at, at this point, I think it, it would obviously, uh, the mayor's going to circulate that particular uh, ordinance from Garden City. Um, I, I guess I'm looking for some direction in terms of what the expectation is. I don't know. Uh, I'm under the impression uh, that the ordinance here might be considered a bit more um, complicated than what the council would want. Mm -hmm. I'm also under the impression that at least a decent number of uh, individuals, uh, including the mayor, like the approach of kind of having like districts or specific locations, even though there seem to be some people who want to end up having, including Councilman Baydoun, want to end up having, like everyone being able to apply for this and then go through a process. Um, if I'm going to be directed to uh, change something, I would want to end up having, uh, or come up with something, I would want to end up having a little more direction. Otherwise, I'm just going to be taking a stab in the dark at what I think everyone is thinking up here, which I've done a pretty good job of that over the years, but uh, you know, it's not always easy to know what uh, seven different people want based on <laughs> comments they make. Just as a possibility, so I'm just throwing it out here, and this is just uh, brainstorming, just food for thought. No pun intended, but um, <laughs> maybe we do this for 30, 45 days, right? And then we go back and pick the best practices from this we include it in a similar ordinance to what the mayor is going to be sending to us from a sister city. 
maybe Councilman Beidoun can bring us what he had seen in Dearborn, just mm -hmm. as another option to maybe email it to us so we can take a look at that. And then maybe in 45 days, we revisit this. I'll set up another uh, study session to give you, not at that, by that particular point, because look, let me tell you something, I can speak for myself. There's a lot of unknowns in this thing. I mean, I am, uh, you know, I, th I thought we would do this study session. This would clarify a lot of things. I'm more confused than when I started. <laughs> and, I, and I don't know if the rest feel the same way, but there's a lot of open-ended stuff that I didn't think about and now the mayor's brought up and, and different department heads have brought up that have to be taken into account, and including the safety of our residents. So maybe then in 45 days, we could come back to, you know, convene again and then give, at that point, our corporation counselor direct direction as far as which way we want it by that point. Mm -hmm. Then by that point, we've seen what worked and what didn't work. And then we've, we also know we'll have a much better, clear, a much more clear idea as far as the demand for this. Because right now, I mean, we still don't know what the demand for this. I mean, uh, Rick uh, Watland of the building department said he had six to 10 people talk to him about this. Okay, but nobody's officially right. started. And we don't know how many. It may end up being two people, and maybe we're spinning our wheels for nothing. But if it ends up being 200 food trucks, well, then now we're going to have a longer meeting with our but corporation council. Uh, council Chair, uh, just because we had a minimum amount of people actually interested doesn't mean that others will not be open, because a lot of people are not aware that we have an ordinance. Absolutely. Yeah. I, and, and this is exactly why I thought something like this, uh, especially before Ramadan, can give it exposure maybe some media attention, whatever it is, conversations, so that people know, hey, it is going to be regulated. We don't want it to be a, a free-for-all. Councilor okay. Chair, yes. I think we need to work with the building department on coming up with a safety side plan. Like, I know Council, he mentioned, like, having, like, a designated area, but I think this is going to be hard. Like, for example, that gas station won't work, but it's not fair for the people at Target, for example, if they want to have a, have a food truck and they have all this parking lot. It's not fair for them to say, no, this is not one of the designated area to have a food truck. So I think we have to come up with a safety side plan that everybody can follow. And according to that side plan, whether they can open, they can, they can have a food truck, whether it's uh, temporary or, or permanent, according to that side plan. So I think this is what we need to work on. And okay. I, I also have something to say. Yes, go ahead. I'm so sorry. And, you know, go ahead. Age before beauty, go right for it. Oh, no, I'm done. Are you sure? Yeah. Um, I also want to say, look, and, and there's no, you know, hidden thing with me to say this. You like that one, didn't you, Councilman? Well, I was just thinking that uh, Councilman uh, Canstan <laughs> might be thinking that he's better looking. <laughs> he is. He is. He's better looking. Uh, but what I will say is, look, Ramadan's going to come around, and you know, the young man that opened up the, you know, there's a young man that opened up a burger joint, flipping burgers right there on Ford Road in Dearborn Heights. It's, it, it happened, right? Whether he got in trouble or not, or he got, you know, had, you know, the former director come in and shut him down. And today that man opened up a brick and mortar. He is now generating money to the city of Dearborn and in the city of uh, uh, Brighton, where that man now started because the city of Dearborn Heights gave him some type of future. Um, and, and it started because this guy, Dave's Hot Chicken, not this Dave, but really Dave's Hot Chicken started in California. A reporter came in, had the sandwich and said, what the heck is this? Guess what, Dave's Hot Chicken is a Fortune 500 company. They opened up in Dearborn, they're opening up in Troy, they're going to Canada, it started in California, um, and it, it is still selling out today in Dearborn because it started off of a, a little small parking lot. Okay. And believe it or not, Dearborn Heights offered that. They offered that to the sort of festival. They offered that, you know, Mike Mackey, when he opened up, thought he was gonna have two, three, he had his son flipping hot dogs and his son's friend making nachos. By the end of Ramadan, there was 30 different vendors in there, all generating money, having a good time. I don't want to take that away from people. Uh, so I, and maybe it doesn't, it doesn't have to be a, uh, a food service or, or, or food truck license temporary. Maybe, maybe it's something for Ramadan that I'm going to be able to give this to uh, a group of people in the community that are Muslim and celebrating uh, their, while they break their fast, they can go out to Sohr and have different spots, different tents opened up. Uh, well, so, well, so some of the places of options that we did discuss last year, if you recall, Mayor, was the Campfield Center was one. Yeah. To go along with what Corporation Council Council is mentioning, the other ones, of course, Height. Now that one's we don't own it, but they, of course, did one. But there was a third one, which was Warren Valley. I, I would love that. That's another spot if people want to bring in their food trucks and then. Open. But, but then again, 
we got to address tents. Because so some I, are not going to be food trucks. Yeah, and you're right. Most and, people cannot afford a hundred thousand dollar food truck. Just, just one last part on this, We're and I just, I just want to give you just a quick example at Fairlane Town Center, which I'm going to take all. I'm going to take some of you guys with this. Actually, I have a spot set up there. It's a Hot Shot Hoops. Come and take two shots, five dollars. Believe it or not, I'm setting it up. And so what they were able to do was ten tents. It will, it will come with a heater. The health department and the fire marshal will approve this. They are going to give their feed to the Ramadan Tzor Festival. They're going to give their feed to the city of Dearborn for basically, you know, the inspections coming in and the building department and the licensings and everything. And they went over it. And it's, and it's being adopted and it's showing that there's a designated area where you're able to come in, set up, get approved. And if you're approved, for the temp by the way, and it's only for 14 days. And then 14 days, they come back and they recheck it all. They revisit this in 14 days again. So on April the 2nd, everybody will be ch tested. 14 days later, on April 15th, everybody will be tested again. And if you're there again in 15 days uh, or 14 days, they're going to check you again. And if you're not, you get your bond money back and you move on. Council Chair, Council I, I just want to make the public aware, and with no disrespect to anyone here, this is not just about Ramadan. I, I understand that. Be, because all the, all the talk is, is here is about Ramadan, Ramadan, Ramadan. This is something that we could have when we have uh, music in the park. Fourth okay, the 4th of July. Um, somebody may want to do something for Easter uh, at an Easter egg hunt or, or something of that. And so I, I just want the public to be aware of that because I did receive calls on that and, and, and I don't know how to answer them. So, you know, this is more than just Ramadan. Well, Councilman, I, just, I was saying that it, it's, it happens a lot more in well, Ramadan. With no doubt with this community. Yes. And in other communities, it happens 24-7. Correct. <laughs> you know, like you were saying, like for you go Summer to Ferndale, baseball, another community, baseball. it's the yeah, baseball games, everything. Correct. So you know, we got to we, we've got to get within the times and get into the right twenty first century. But that's why this is can what we're putting together here is a temporary license because Ramadan is coming up. Because look, we have the other alternative, Councilman, <coughs> is to not to address it at oh, all, I, I, and, I, and not take not take it to account Ramadan, and then we have. We go back no, to square I, one where people were just opening I up just, without any type of regulation. I just want the people no, to I get know it, absolutely. this is not yeah. just because of the Ramadan. The vision is for year-round. Year-round. Including the Detroit Lions Super Bowl celebration. I mean, we were planning on having <laughs> and, a lot of food and, trucks and, out And 65, right. 65. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have a lot of food trucks out there for that. Um, <laughs> nobody should laugh here. To year 65, 65. <laughs> so, if man is still alive. Okay. Was there, so one last thing I do want to address is in this preliminary ordinance, and I'm calling it preliminary ordinance because it's not the final draft, obviously. It's just an initial draft from five years ago. But in it, if we're addressing Ramadan, it does say it's up to 11 p.m. Mm -hmm. It does. Yeah. So that's something that's got to be addressed. So that's if it's done. Ramadan... For those that do follow yep, Ramadan, yep, that defeats the purpose. Because exactly. as you know, people want to be out to eat, you know, just before... It starts uh, at 11. Yeah, yeah, it starts at 11. It starts 12. at 12. Yeah, so <laughs> that's got to be addressed. Well, now it's early. But I, but I just want to say, just want to readdress the councilman that I'm saying, I understand that this ordinance says it does not welcome uh, tents. And so I was referencing Ramadan because it's happening and it happens oh, in this I agree. community. Pretty much I agree. And, and, it's, and it's happening in this community, which is a large population of Muslim Americans that live here. So I'm going to also address that for those 30 nights of Ramadan, it can even be just a Friday, Saturday event, uh, so that we're, we're being considerate of everybody where you can get a license on Friday, Saturday. Hell, I'm, I'm, I'm so, just saying that. But. So then if that's the case, if we have already given uh, Gary Miatki direction to put something together for the next council meeting to, for us to be able to vote on, then we would have to add tents in there. Because Correct. the reality is most people are not going to own a food truck, no. which are, I just did a quick search online, and there were like 50,000, 100,000, 150,000. That makes it pretty much prohibitive for most people. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, do you guys, we're not voting, but I think for us to vote on it Tuesday, if you could include in there within this something about, uh, when I say tents, we're not talking about tent cents. <laughs> or, the, you know, canopies, Canopy. if you want to call them. Yeah. See, a food truck is, it's inspected by the health department. It's, they've got the, the cooking facility and everything there. But... You both brought up a good point. We want to change 11 o'clock to what, 12.30 or 4 a.m.? Uh, 12.30 or 4 a.m. I would say 11.30 to 
get you know prepare a half hour earlier, eleven thirty to four a.m. and. Yeah. I know, and, it is, and the council, including the mayor when he was on council, and, and I think you guys unanimously approved the one that happened at the... Hype. And I want you to know, during Ramadan, traditionally, Islamically, uh, it's prohibited to be playing music. So there is no music allowed at any of these events. Right. That's so you're not going to be sitting there and having any disco balls and dancing. It's, it's, it, it's frowned upon. It's supposed to be solemn. Yes, it's supposed yeah. to be silent. It's supposed to be going in, eating, For and families. leaving. Okay. And the ones that were put on, the big venue ones, such as the one at Hype, the one at Camfield, uh, were put together with, I mean, almost no issues that I knew of. I, I visited both of them. They were nicely put together. Zero music. Yeah. Council Chair, just yes. in terms of your motion, then, if we're going to end up having um, possibly temps, or tents as a temporary use. Well, I don't know if tents is the right term for I'm thinking like more than I, 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 you, Your motion that you adopted on the 22nd would need to be Pop -ups. tweaked as far as that goes. Uh, no, absolutely. Yes. Yes. So yes. is absolutely. that. Is that yes, yes, absolutely. Yes. And this is for just, again, on a temporary <laughs> basis right now. Right. I'm so we could re reassess this. Please, please remind me on that just so I do Council the Chair. motion. Right? Yes, Council do, do we want to include Tuesday that or? Yes, okay. include that for Tuesday Dean, so that we can make that. Because look, this is what's going to be opening up. That's the reality of what's going to be opening yeah, up. The be, reality is people are not going to go buy $100,000 food trucks for a temporary permit to try it out for a week or two and then just keep the $100,000 food truck. It ain't going to happen. Let's, let's be real. So chances are it would include some sort of tents. And I want to make sure that Rick Watland and his team uh, are making sure that this is safe. Because if that's you. what's opening up, we want to make sure it's safe. And then what, what time do we want? Do we want 2 a.m.? Do we want 12.30? Mm -hmm. Do we want 11 to 4? No 4. It's usually there, 10 to 4. There is no, nothing specified right now in terms of either your motion or in terms of the ordinance on the time. And when I say the ordinance, I'm talking about the ordinance that's the basis for your motion. I'm not talking about the okay. proposed ordinance. The proposed ordinance says 11, Dust. but it's not adopted. What, what we're relying on, again, mm -hmm is under section uh, 36254E of the code. So um, right now it just says food trucks, um, and we would need to expand that to, it sounds like, tents and carts, come up with a fee, and um, if you want to specify some time uh, specifically, well, that would apply. You could potentially put that in your in in your yeah, motion. Whatever, well, I, well, let's not, I'm, I think I'll allow here. Let's not put a time now, because if you think about it, Technically, any restaurant can open up almost 24 hours, so long as there's, you know, uh, peace and they're not infringing on residents. They can open up as long as they want to open up. Ramsford. Well, Caesar's ultimately, ultimately it will also be they... a city council decision. Remember, what is is administratively uh, approved tentatively has to still come back to this honorable body. And if indeed that's the case, then you could potentially end up asking them what time they're looking at. And frankly, the clerk's office and the building department should probably end up asking that question because there may be some incompatibility, all depending on where the person is, is hoping to set up. Um, the, the, this has been an issue over the years sometimes when we've ended up having lar you know, parties outside and, uh, but then at that point, they're breaking an ordinance of keeping the peace and noise level, and they can be shut down. True, but it's a lot more difficult to end up shutting someone down under those circumstances because now you're coming in and you're having the police come in and say, you have to be shut down or you have to turn it in or we're going to end up arresting you for breach of peace as opposed to preemptively dealing with it and just saying the person can't end up doing it. But on the other hand, if this is going to be used at least on a temporary basis for right now, for Ramadan purposes, it, it won't work unless it's, you know, 10 right. well, until 4 a.m. And, and, and again, that's up to your But most body. things, just so that you know, most things pretty much die down after 1.30, 2 o'clock starts to die down. So like, it, it, like I, I know the mayor was just talking about and, and talking about being at uh, the festival at Elite Sports, and you said it, he was cleaning up. I witnessed him picking up garbage bins thrown away. I, I watched the councilman pull up in his porch and park his car like he was 16 years old all over again. Um, and, and everybody was having a great time. And guess what? Everybody had a tent. Every, it was actually one huge tent, and everybody was under the tent, and everybody was cooking. And um, it was quiet. I, I, and it, it was, was quiet. There was no I mean, you would hear, you would actually, the only thing you were hearing was uh, the big generators. Um, but as far as music, no. Argument. It was enforced by, I believe, the, uh, some police and security, but they were tense. 
So are they not going to be able to be able to do that this year? Well, you could also take a, a, a again, a kind of more measured approach. You could end up saying that uh, they can have this, but no music after a particular time. Well, I, 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 don't, I mean, I think from 11 to 4, there should be no music at all. Zips out of zero, no music. Right, and then, and then that yeah, might yeah. end up being something that's included in the motion as well. Yeah. And then you, you preemptively deal with the main cause or potential cause of uh, problems for residents who are in adjoining areas. But I want to make it clear, too, that the purpose of this ordinance is not a Ramadan thing. It just so right. happens, time-wise, yes. that Ramadan's coming up, and it's a factor. We do have to address it. But this, the whole purpose of this ordinance is not for Ramadan. It's for year-round, mm -hmm. during any and all celebrations, including you know, uh, block parties. You know, I know a lot of neighborhoods do right. block parties, and they may bring in a food truck. Fourth of July. The Fourth of July, you know. The right. mayor threw a great and, and, block and, party. And, and council there. there. The mayor. Oh, okay. Council Chair, the way your motion was adopted would apply even under those circumstances, so you can come up with a rule that's not just related to Ramadan in terms of, um, in terms of time for there to be music or not music or something along those lines. And that would probably make the most uh, the most sense in this situation. It's just that, sure, you know, it, 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 there has to be um, structure, some structure, structure but I there also has to be some reasonable um, uh, some reasonable differentiation between times. Sure, uh, you know, after a certain point. And let me make it clear: once our corporation counselor puts a motion together, keep in mind at the council as a council body. At the city council, that's when we'll have a discussion, and we may tweak it, whatever it is that he's put in to say, no, we don't want this. We're gonna with, with, with a change of X, Y, or Z, and then approve it or deny it at that particular point. Was there anything else from anybody else on this table? So, Gary Miyaki, council yes, chair, I, I actually recommend when Mr. Miyaki prepares it, sends it to you guys. You guys look at it. So instead of you know, having a 10-hour meeting that night, you know, just you guys look at it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It'll be, send, it'll be in the yeah. packet. Yeah, send, yeah, I mean, re recommend changes. Obviously, we can amend the agenda sure. to, uh, to change it. So if there's anything yeah. major, uh, good point. make that recommendation. Yeah, very good point. The earlier you get it to us, Gary, maybe send it to all the council members instantly. Um, the, the, the better. Yeah, so, I mean, the normal protocol is for me to uh, send things to the mayor's office, but I could send it if the mayor yeah. has no problem. I could send it to everyone directly. Uh, but first of all, I'm going to want to make sure I confer with the uh, city clerk because I think she's been taking, and the council secretary, been taking better notes than I have, and I don't want to miss anything before I send something. <laughs> sure. No, uh, absolutely. absolutely. Uh, okay, so nothing else on this table. So, Gary, uh, were you all set? So, yes, uh, sure. Council Chair. So, in addition, so for step two, you know, for the ordinance, so I'm going to send the ordinance to you, uh, to, the, to the council tomorrow. So if you guys can actually, we, we can make it a working ordinance. So I just convert it into a Word document, but I, I can't connect here. So yeah. I'll send both uh, a, a PDF and a Word document. So you guys can make changes to the Word document, maybe in red. And also, you know, you can send them all to me, all the changes then I can share with Mr. Miyaki on another day. Okay. So we can, I mean, it doesn't have to be in the next week or two or three yeah. or whatever. So I agree. Yeah. I also so. don't want to, I mean, we don't have to rush this in the next, by, by this Tuesday. I, I no, also, we're not adopting the ordinance is, this right is now. The, no, we're talking about the permanent one. The, the permanent per, one. The mayor is talking about the permanent the ordinance. The permanent one is one. We're talking yeah. about the temporary. Right. And, 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 okay. and I'm yes. the situation at home that I need to go. You okay? Okay. So no problem. Go ahead. My daughter. No problem. Go ahead. And I'm, I'm under the impression, okay. uh, Council Chair, that, again, the, the process that you're talking about for the more permanent thing would be 30 to 45 days out after we've had the experience with the, uh, the temporary, we revisit it, and then we look at these ordinances, and then we deal exactly. with any revisions. That's the game plan. Sounds okay, great. great. So let me start with the audience first. Anybody, any, any audience that has any type of public comment that they would like to come up and speak? Vince, come on up. Adam Cole, Street Street Street. Columbia Street. Just the street. I just oh, hope you guys uh, do a little more research on this. I looked at Detroit's uh, truck vendors. It's $178 a day. 
How much is that? I'm sorry. $178 a day. Yeah. Plus, there's an additional charge if they're going to bring out food carts to serve, set up tables, or anything like that. So, other cities like Plymouth have experience with this, right? Have you been to Plymouth during the Ice Festival or anything? Yes, sir. They've got all sorts of trucks there. Might I suggest you look at their, their ordinance, too, not just Garden Cities. I think Garden Cities is a good idea. Um, but check some of these fees. If you're spending $150,000 to $200,000 on one of these trucks, you can afford a $1,000 bond to clean up the mess. Those guys aren't cheap, okay? We have enough issues with uh, cleaning up after the 4th of July and everything else, okay? Ordinance is going to have their hands full. And I suggest... If we could bring out some of our uh, reserve officers to be ordinance officers, that might relieve some of the issues that the ordinance department is having. I don't know if you can do that. Yeah, that's uh, but it's a union issue, so we'll, we'll, well discuss the union, that. Yeah. The, the, at this time of year, the union's going to have to bend a little. Well, you know, uh, with the city's uh, in a different situation right now. And if they don't want to work weekends, then maybe we'll hire an outside source to do the, uh, the ordinance. Mm -hmm. you know, that's just my thought. Sure. Um, and please, don't rush into this, Mo. I agree. I don't want you to don't, rush you know, you are You are pushing this very hard, and it seems like you've got vested interest. I have what? Vested interest. The vested interest? Yeah. Vested. I don't. Okay. I, well, what I, what I want way, is... Just the way I'm watching it out there, you're the only one pushing this. So... Uh, Mr. Constance hasn't really pushed it as hard as you have. Neither has Mr. Ahmad. You yeah, know, it's it just... Yeah, yeah. So it's, we don't I, have I, personal say. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's, it's not... It's, and I don't... I'm not even taking it as, as that. But I just want you to know that I did it. And so I understand it. Yeah. And what I'm, what I'm witnessing is, is somebody that but goes you want, out... You want it real quick. Let's get this done. You just don't. No, I just want to be accessible. That's all. Yeah. No, but, but, but just to help <laughs> help him in answering this, uh, for Councilman Moby Dune, I, I know firsthand from having tried Heights hot dogs way back <laughs> when when he first started with it. So he's the one that's got the most. I, I predict the definitely more experience. than me. Experience. Most experience in that particular field than all of us. So he's kind of like a. Uh, expert witness almost. Uh, but I will say for the record, I sold it and no longer operate any type of food trucks. Yes. So okay. for the record. And we'll not be doing any this Ramadan or any prior. My wife will not even allow me to do it anymore. Okay, my apologies. It's but, okay, but, but just for I, the record. And I do think it is a good idea to have a background check on some of these vendors. We, well, got, we got them on the ice cream vendors. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just my thought. How long does that take? I'm curious, Madam Clerk. I don't know. They have to go to the police department. But or you I, can do it on iChat. They can it, do it on iChat and supply yeah. it. Yeah. I presume it day yeah, right away, right? Well, it, it depends on the level. There's different levels of background check, but uh, we'll look at that. We'll see the last eye chat we did to see. Uh, sure. Uh, that we also have outside vendors that can do a background check, so we'll okay. see. I mean, but it, it, I'm, so, I'm sorry, Councilman. It also comes with a cost as well for the yes. background checks. Yeah, I, I do know there's a cost, but I, I don't know. Okay. So, so, sorry. Okay. Council Chair, I think well, the gentleman sure, brought a good point. I just want to make sure, you, are you all set on your end, Vince? Uh, yeah, one other thing is just, I just don't want to see these things popping up everywhere. I'm looking like an eyesore. Um, that, that's why we're regulating it. Yeah, okay, I understand that. Yeah, I agree. But I, you know, it's on for Vince. I think he, he brought a good point, especially like we're concentrating on uh, food trucks. Uh, I think we need to um, concentrate too on food, the, the tents too as well, because I think Mostly, I think we're going to see tents, whether it's Fourth of July or different events or, or maybe Ramadan. Yeah, because it's so cheaper I think, to open up. Correct. So, so I, yeah, I agree. Probably they cost so much money. I, don't, I didn't see them that much. Is there so many food trucks? And well, I'm sure it all depends on what type of equipment you put in there. Correct, you know, yeah. Uh, if you've got your uh, propane tanks and stuff like that or, or uh, your LP gas hookup, yeah, your electrical generators, and... and just like today, or whenever it was, we find out that we had an electric, uh, illegal hookup through a power system, and the thing caught fire. So how much did that, did that cost the city to go out there and take care of all that? 
I, I also want you to keep in mind that like right now, if you go to a football game at Crestwood, and I'm sure you can attest to this, there's a tent. Mm -hmm. They bring in their, you know, grill. the guy brings in his uh, grill and they're flipping hot dogs and hamburgers and they're selling them to the kids that are watching the football game. Yeah. Are we gonna start telling the Crestwood High School you're no longer allowed to do that? And it's usually like the, the dad's club or the but, but, parent but group in there. Right. But what are we talking about as far as regulating it? Are we yeah. going to be able to tell, hey, the dad's club, at, you know, even at uh, the Redskins football game that I went to? Is that considered a private uh, location that they can do whatever they want? Like, no. It's like no, a home? I don't think you, so. If you can't, can't do it at the gas station, you so can't do it at the That's, 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 like, that's like our building director. Yes. Yes. Rick, okay. you want to go ahead? How are you doing? The... We're kind of getting off of it. The ordinance that was written in 2017, those food trucks were set for a gas station all the time. We're trying to set up a temporary food truck for a weekend or a week. And the, that ordinance doesn't cover that. So really? that's why we're trying to do all the stuff where it's, you know, for 30 days or 10 days or 15 days. The other ordinance is for full time. Rick, I got a question for you. Would the Crestwood High School or Annapolis High School be uh, potentially, could they get in trouble for letting the dad's club to come in and sell hamburgers and hot dogs out of their, during their football games? Out of the food truck, by rights, they should have a temporary permit for- But, but they're not food trucks. They're, they're simply just a grill with a tent. No, that's usually the dad's club. That's kind of ran by the school, and the school does have a health department approval to do their stuff. Yeah, if, so. if, I, if I may, uh, schools are also very strange in terms of regulations vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, municipal zoning and other types of land use. Uh, I think it's a, I, I'm not sure what the answer is, but I can tell you it's not necessarily, legally speaking, the easiest thing to address. It's just like they can come in and end up building and we have very little oversight over what they they do either for charter schools or for uh, regular uh, public schools. Okay. Thank yeah, you. It's all, it's, it's anything at the school is pretty much regulated through the state. So. Okay. Thank you. But, but with, the, with the tents, the you know, like the hype had their thing that he he filled out for a festival. So right, it was a little different. Festivals Correct. and the food truck ordinance is sure. kind of different. Sure. So. But either way, my vision is to continue to regulate this and not let it be a free for all. Right. Exactly. Uh, Vince, but on a that? temporary basis. Correct. Yeah. We also have Vince. Uh, I was just going to say one more comment. Uh, I apologize, Mr. Perdoon. I didn't make to. No, to, Vince, I, you're the man. You know, I swear. Um, I, just from what I was seeing in the audience, it just gets my wheels going, and I'm, I'm going to speak my mind. So I have. So, but I apologize. No, please I, don't apologize. We're family. You don't apologize to family. Okay, sir. Thank you. All right, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Vince. Anybody else in the audience that had a question? Come on up. How you doing? Mike Blackburn, Ar Arnold Street. Um, according from what I heard, for street vendor and ice cream truck, it's $250 business. No, 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 no. I think that falls under, uh, no, street vendor is less than that. Um, festival. Festival. Is more. Okay, so let's say the fee is $250 for taco truck or a food truck. That should be good for a whole year. So that's cost of doing business. You figure out 12 months out of the year, that's 20, 20 bucks a month. Okay, um, Mo uses uh, corn, corn on the corner, my daughter loves it. <clears throat> um, let's say, you know, he pays $250 fee, so he has a year-long business. He wants to open up every Friday and Saturday night till midnight, selling corn on the corner. Um, according to what uh, Mayor said with guarantee, $25 a day, $30 a day, what, what, whatever it is, he pays the fee, he opens up every Friday and Saturday night, he parks in the same spot all the time. Um, I don't see um, anything wrong with it. I don't, I don't see anything wrong with that. And another thing, let's say I'm the manager of O'Reilly's on Van Born. I want to have a car show. I want to get some food trucks in for the car show. Will there be a list of food trucks that paid their business license fee either in the billing department 
or in the clerk's office where I can say, can I get this list because I want to get some food trucks? It's a good question. So I, I can answer you this, Mike, in, in general. This whole thing is fluid. This is, this is a, a working document. This is not an end all. This is just a starting point. And our vision was just to get this thing started yes. and then keep making adjustments and corrections until we get it down to as close to our vision as possible, which is everything being regulated and not a free-for-all. Yes, and that's why I'm getting to as it gets to the permit. But it's a good orders. point, yeah. Um, because if Target wants to have something, I want to give, you know, manager a Target. I want to have a customer appreciation day, or a realtor wants to have a customer appreciation for everybody that they bought and sold houses for. Where can I get a list of food trucks that have already um, paid their business <clears throat> license and can uh, do business? I mean, the, the city, city, I presume, obviously, is public records. So I presume the clerk's office, once this thing's up and running, provided hypothetically 20 food trucks have applied and got approved. Okay. I presume that that's public knowledge to where they have access to. Is that correct, Madam Clerk? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you can probably get it from them. A Cinnabon truck, or, but he's going to. You know, that's up to the business owner. A lot of this is controlled by the market. You know, if, the, if, if that no, he's was talking the, about to get a list of what has been approved. A list so I can look at, okay, you know, I want to get a taco truck. Job, I want to get an ice cream truck. I want to get Dave's hot dogs. <laughs> but I don't have numbers to anybody. I don't know how to get a hold of these food trucks. I don't know anything. But that's up for those businesses to advertise, to not for the city maybe to keep a list, the Chamber of Commerce maybe, but... <clears throat> Because I know at DPW, if a resident is looking for um, a tree contractor to cut down a tree, mm -hmm. there is a list of tree contractors that have business Registry. license within the city to do business within the city, and they can get numbers, they can get names of tree contractors when they're looking to get their tree cut down. If we can do it for tree contractors, why can't we do it for food yeah, trucks? That's a good idea. I'm looking. sure the clerks will put some together. It's good to know Thank about you. tree contractors. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Appreciate it. I assume there's nobody else. Anybody else in the audience need to speak? Seeing none. On Zoom, Madam Clerk, is there anybody else on I clerk? do have one. I'm sorry? I do have one. Okay. Go ahead. Let me ask her to unmute. Hi. Um, I do have a couple of concerns myself in regards to the recreation programs that we run. Um, the vendors currently, what we've worked out with them is we actually um, get a payment from them to help us with our cost of our event. Uh, if the vendors are going to have to pay $350 approximately, give or take what you guys come up with, um, and then they have to make a profit, um, we're more than likely not going to be able to get vendors for our events. We've already had vendors come back and say um, that they won't come back to a future event because they didn't make enough money or they didn't make their costs. So that's definitely something that I want you to consider. Um, and then the other thing is, is what uh, Robert brought up earlier were the community groups at the Spirit Festival. Um, D7, um, we had the wrestling group, uh, we have the baseball group, and they all have uh, tents and they use that for fundraising. Um, if we charge them that kind of fee, I don't think that we'll get any um, community groups for Spirit okay. Festival. So those are the things that I'm really concerned about. No, th those are good points. And that's, I love those. Uh, I Kimberly Lawrence Hell, we're the director of our recreation department, just for full disclosure. I, I agree with her, actually, on That's that. That's a good point. She makes good a very point. valid point. So, but again, our ordinance, uh, Kim, is not mm -hmm. in place yet. We don't have an official right. ordinance. This is the a, thing of, a working the thing about the concerts, that we adjustments to. Yeah, just one more thing. The thing about the concerts is we don't charge a fee for them. Um, and if we don't get vendors um, or if we're not able to get vendors, um, a lot of the people will bring something to eat or drink. Only a very few purchase something, so if they have to pay, pay that exorbitant fee, um, that's why they wouldn't come back. So that's, okay. that's I it. I appreciate it. Anybody else on Zoom that has a comment to make? I do not see any hands up. Do you have, you have somebody or no? No, I do not have any. Okay. I think, uh, may I? Yeah, go ahead. I, I think after listening to Director Kim, I think she... Uh, I think uh, to be fair to everybody, I think maybe going with the, especially for the temporary one, going with the daily 
uh, feel like the mayor suggested, I think would be ideal. It would be fair to everyone. I mean, it does make sense. I mean, imagine paying that much money and you're going to be there for one day or maybe a couple hours. So. And Council, I just have one last thing. I just, these are just my closing remarks. And for the residents at home, number one, I'm not making this just a Ramadan thing, and this isn't just a Ramadan thing. Uh, so I don't want anybody to take, you know, you know my passion uh, for being one-sided. And I want you to know that I have no personal, I'm not vested in this other than wanting to enjoy it. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'd like to believe I'm somewhat young, at least on this council. You are. And, and, and I really, really enjoy it. And come around, you know, with Ramadan, I, I want to be able to walk up to the guy that's giving me the corn. I want to go down and have the pancakes that are happening. Then I also want to go ahead and grab my, you know, Jibni Manusha. And there shouldn't be anything wrong with it. <laughs> as long as everybody is, you know, in compliance with the health department and, and with the city. Uh, you know, we really, I could have, I, and I am the one that was kind of moving, uh, you know, head on with this. But I also want you to keep in mind, I could have stayed quiet and everything would have continued to happen. And there would be no, you know, regulations or you know, government happening. Um, so I, I, I just want to make that clear is that I just want to make sure that we have the proper uh, safety for our residents at home and, and there is no hazard to society. Um, last year during Ramadan people were crossing the street on Ford Road and Gully. Gully. I, you know, I, I worked with the mayor and the council chair here to have the county flip it so that it was no longer blinking so that people were able to walk through on Ford Road and Gully because it was, it was crazy. I, at one point I was scared somebody was literally going to die. I hate to use the word die, but somebody was going to die if that wasn't switched. There are thousands of people in the street. I enjoyed that you know, the community came together during Ramadan, but I did not enjoy that it was a blinking light. Yeah. Uh, and so I believe the council chair made a phone call and I made a phone call and you know, they, they were able to switch it halfway through Ramadan. I'm actually gonna call them now to make sure that it's set up uh, but I also want to make sure that we're, we're, we're just not jumping through a bunch of hoops. And, and it's so unfortunate that after Ramadan, we're probably not going to see as many food trucks. We may see two or three in the city. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of it is going to be temporary and a lot of it is going to be tense. And I, and I want to just be very visual with everybody. I want everybody to know the truth that it's going to be tense and a lot of it's going to happen during Ramadan. Come Ramadan time, it ends during the head and nobody is going to be having tents opened up in, in the middle of the parking lot unless it's 4th of July or it's something temporary if you know, the councilman wants to open up his own brokerage and mm -hmm. you know, you know, Councilman Dave uh, wants to wanna open up his own hot dog please. stand. It's all gonna be temporary. And yeah. it's just unfortunate, but, but that's just so I like what the mayor said, 25 yeah. bucks a well, day. For those that haven't checked these out, they are fun to go to. Council it's chair. good food, yes, Councilman. Yeah, just by way- the Guys and gals, we gotta wrap it up. Piggyback on that, by way of background, when I was council chair, I don't know if you remember, but then clerk Walter Persevitz said, hey look, we, he did this work and it's sitting there and he was very angry and uh, it, this, we discussed it with one of the things, Ramadan coming up, but a lot of other things no. to try to get this finalized so, so we have it in place and I think it's a good idea, yep. but it's not, Absolutely. Mo has the most, Councilman uh, Beydoun has the most experience with this issue and um, uh, uh, so his his suggestions and enthusiasm was very helpful. Yeah, on the making food and the eating part, but okay. <laughs> this guy just called so, me fat on the record. Yeah. So it, with nobody else on here, we're gonna go ahead and end this meeting. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and you have a good night.